Hello and welcome to ICC Academy here in Dubai. News from the middle is that UAE have won the toss and elected to bowl. A couple of changes for both sides. See the Scotland side there that so excellent in beating what were runaway leaders USA yesterday by four wickets here at the ICC Academy. I see a couple of changes for them. Safian Sharif comes out through injury, has a slight knock as does Alistair Evans. In their place, Dylan Budge and Stuart Whittingham for the Scots. As for the UAE, they also make two changes. See Kartik Mayapan, 19-year-old leg spinner, comes into the side for the first time. Sorry, for the second time. And Jonathan Figgy next to him there, 18 year old who scored so many runs. Schools cricket makes his full debut for the UAE senior side, the full ODI debut. 18 year old left hander, so highly regarded. Comes a third teenager in this side, along with Richard Aravind, 17 year old wicketkeeper, currently missing A levels and his studies to feature in this competition. And it'll be UAE who bowl first. In this, the sixth and final ODI of this tri-match series, tri-series that takes shape and forms part of the ICC Cricket World Cup League Two. We're starting at 10 a.m. local time. It's about 15 minutes away from now. And once again, the UAE have won the toss and elected to bowl against Scotland.
be Junaid Siddiqui to start us off. Matthew Cross, the man on strike, opening the batting alongside his captain, Carl Kurtzer, for Scotland. UAE leaving out Zahor Khan today. Just been named in the IPL auction. It'll be interesting to see where they make up his overs. This Darius De Silva was superb with the ball. Just a few days ago, Basil Hamid also turned his arm over. They'll be looking to pick up some of the some of the slack. And I have the pleasure of being joined by Peter Delapena from ESPN Crick Info for the early stages of this at ICC Academy. Where yesterday we saw a thriller between the USA and Scotland. As so often happened in these fixtures so far in this tri series, very topsy turvy game. Pendulum swinging relentlessly throughout. Scotland got, got over the line in the end. It's a good start from Siddiqui so far. It's impressed during this series with the new ball. He has. He's been working so hard in the field with the ball that his jersey number is faded. It's the sign of a hard worker, Barney. He's only worn it a couple of times as well. He's only just into the side. Yeah, those numbers already peeled off. Also impressive about him is they trust him enough that, as he said, Zahur Khan, given a day off, already busy prepping for the IPL auction. Clipped off his legs by Matthew Cross. Very fine. Fine leg won't get round to it. It ends the over with a very nicely timed boundary. Siddiqui just straying for the first time onto the hip of Matthew Cross. And he doesn't miss out, turns it away superbly. He's clipping it off of his thigh, runs away for four. So Hura Khan, I saw a graphic posted yesterday on Twitter, along with Ali Khan, they were the only two bowers to bowl a maiden in the UAE T10 League. Both of them wicket maidens. Ali Khan was a double wicket maiden. He was on a hat trick at one point. Zohar Khan bowled a wicket maiden. If you can bowl a maiden in T10 cricket, Barney, you can be in my team any day. <laughs> we'll see if they get themselves into an IPL team later in the week. It'll be Darius De Silva to take the new ball. He's gone from surprise bowling option to opening the bowling in just a matter of days. It's the envy of every club cricketer in the world right now. Opening the batting, batting at number three. Three or four, depending on where Figgy comes in today. Jonathan Figgy on debut. And he 
he's unlucky. First ball. Kurtz are driving. It runs away for four. A great deal of fortune. Kurtz are not getting his feet moving quite to the pitch of the ball. He drives through the gate. Just misses leg stump. But goes away for four. You open the bowling and bat it three or four. Most people would think you're captaining the team too. This time a much more impressive drive from Kurtzer, much more in control. It's uppish for a little bit, but there's a big gap there. And it's a very well run free. It won't discourage De Silva though. It was in the air for a while. But there is a big gap between those point and extra. So not a huge amount of risk there. Although we see now it's a row of Mustafa coming in to a catching position at extra cover just for that. Yeah, you'd get your match fees worth, wouldn't you, if you're opening the bowling and batting at free? We can confirm Ahmed Raz is still the captain of UAE. And if you're like some teams, club teams in the US, you open the bowling, bat at number three, you you bowl first because then when you bat at number three, you can just pack up your kit and go home. You don't even have to stay to the end of the match to watch what your teammates have done. Gorge on a tee as well. A couple of changes for Scotland as well today, if you're just joining us. Safian Sharif and Alistair Evans both left out. In comes Dylan Budge and Stuart Whittingham for the first time during this series. Safian Sharif has been told earlier by Scotland scorer George, who knows this injury all too well, picked up an injury in five aside football. George himself was in hospital. It was a torn Achilles by the sounds of it. See one of those men left out today, Alistair Evans walking by, giving Peter the nod and a thumbs up. <laughs> Lovely drive down the ground for four. Superb shot. Timed beautifully. It's the right to silver just over pitches. And it's nothing more than just a push but the timing is immaculate. And it races away for four. Might have been some fortune at the start of that over for Carl Kurtzer but he ends it in fine fashion. 12 from that over. Well, after such a methodical start yesterday against USA where they crawled to 24 in the first eight overs, much brisker start here. 16 for nine and two. And when Kyle Kutz is driving like that, you know he's feeling very, very comfortable. Such a smooth, straight driver through mid on, mid off. Allie Evans Giving a hello and a thumbs up. I feel obligated now to say hi to his family back in Scotland. His partner plays for the women's team, Samantha Hago. Sam, if you're watching, good morning. I feel like I need to round out the rest of the Cricket Scotland crew, crew watching. 
Glizzy Sleet, Jake Perry, Ian Leggett. Kenny Crichton. Former CEO Malcolm Cannon, if he's still tuning in. Recently ended his tenure at the end of the summer. One big happy family at the Grange. Yeah, it's been a very good start from Scotland. Would have pleased all of those people getting a shout out back home. Donald McLeod, Callum's dad, photographer. Regular fixture on the boundary with his long lens. And you know he's been there for such a long time because the Scotland players are the best trained when they get to 50 or 100. They know to turn and point their bat directly to Donald. They know where he is at all times on the boundary. Rarely do you see a Cricket Scotland landmark achieved without it being noted in photographic form. Some of the USA guys not quite up to speed on that yet. Steven Taylor with just a, a gentle thumbs up for his 50 yesterday. Xavier Marshall, a very casual prod. Monak Patel was, again, another casual, just thumbs up, barely any reaction. How are they going to share these landmarks on Facebook and Instagram, Barney? They don't know where the cameraman is standing. That's what it's all about now, isn't it? All about the gram. If it's not in an Instagram story, Barney, it didn't happen. <laughs> Just want to thank uh, Chris Whiteoak, who's a photographer out here for the National. Chris, if you're watching, hello, mate. I hope all's well. He gets inundated with requests from the UAE players for photos. Do you get the same from the US side? I imagine you do. On occasion, yes. I am peppered with a few requests here and there. Pulled firmly into the leg side. It's been a great start from Scotland here. B2. More so actually from the under 19 players I've encountered. The number one request I get from, from players, usually the junior players who say, I need to update my Facebook profile pic. Can you get me in action? And they fill themselves with so much pressure in that regard because there were a few occasions this past summer where a player would come up to me and do that, and then he'd go out and run himself out second ball. <laughs> and the only photo I have is him with the bales getting knocked off. <laughs> you want to post that as your profile pic? It's all yours. Another firm drive. This Scottish pair looking fine form already, timing the ball so well. That was hit straight with the fielder, but so firmly. It's Mohamed Usman who was doing the fielding. The thing that happens if you do that, Barney, <laughs> is if your teammates hear about it, they'll never let you hear the end of it. How's that Facebook photo? <laughs> yeah, they'll probably start requesting the photo as well. Darius De Silva will continue on the far end. Disappointing first over for him, charged with the new ball. You do wonder just whether that might prove costly to the UAE without another fully recognized seamer to go alongside Junaid Siddiqui on a pitch here that has done a little bit for, for seam bowlers. It's been good carry. Snipped around early on. Serb Netravalka was swinging it yesterday for the USA. One man, Wahid Ahmed, who's 
controlling the boundary of the drinks. Who's been left out today? One of those seam options. It's a Hawk Khan, the biggest surprise. Not heard anything yet as to whether it's an injury. As a Hawk had been very good in tandem with Siddiqui. Surprised to see him left out. Matthew Cross just intimating there that the Silver rolled his wrist over the ball on that one. He's come back well after his first over went for 12. He's just gone for one from his first three. And he just settled in a little now. Clipped into the leg side. There's a man there, but it falls just short of Jonathan Figgy. The man on debut. He's in the air for a while, though. Seems some greyish clouds sweeping over from what will be behind the bowler as you're looking at the screen. Can't have more rain, can we? Well, if we do, it's my fault because I've just spent the last four overs applying copious amounts of sunscreen. <laughs> and just as I put the hex on Xavier Marshall all week long, saying how well said he looked only to get out, it's inevitable now. The sky's going to open up at some point today. Superb shot. Carl Kurtz are just waiting on that. Punches through the offside. Again, he doesn't move his feet a huge amount, Kurtz. Are, but when he frees his arms and times it like that, right in the gap. Excellent shot. Who's aiming for us, Barney? 
Straight to the picket fence on the extra cover boundary where we're situated. Very, very well run three here by Matthew Cross. And the way things look early on here, Barney, you would think it was the UAE who was playing it back to back. They're a bit sluggish in the field. Yeah, and we've mentioned how lively they can be at times. Do seem a bit flat so far, the UAE. As the Scots have made a superb start. Seven from these first two balls as well. For those curious, they are back using the pitch that was used for the USA UAE contest three days ago. So different pitch than the one that was used yesterday for USA and Scotland. The boundary on that east side is back to 80 meters and the one on the west side 64 meters as a result. Flash down to mid to third man, just be one. Yep, all of a sudden, with the pitch moved over towards us a bit more, it's hard pressed to see the man on the far boundary at times. Literally, because the field is crowned, there's the slope. You can see maybe from the knees or the waist up, depending on who's out there. Very interesting field that Ahmed Raz has now put in place. Two men close in on the drive, Basil Hamid and Ram Ahmed Raza himself. Big flash outside the off stump. To end the over, 33 without loss then Scotland after five. Very good start from them. It's really awesome, ominous looking clouds that are making their way over us. Jonathan Figgy out here to do the fielding. Does seem very flat out there, doesn't it, Peter? The UAE, surprisingly so. Especially considering the conditions, mm. it is a bit overcast.
pretty confident appeal, but it looked too high on first first glance. We see the replay here. And possibly outside off stump as well. Other than that, had a lot going for it, Barney. That has lifted it a little bit though. There's a bit more chatter from the UE players. You surprised to see them not go in with a, another frontline seamer today? So we have seen it do a bit here, especially early on. I think the thing that's been fascinating to observe from the three teams here this week is they've been quite steadfast in their strategic principles regardless of conditions. So from that standpoint, they've got Ahmed Raza, Rohan Mustafa, Karthik Mayapan. They're committed to spin no matter what from the looks of it today UAE and similarly Scotland yesterday it was interesting talking to coach Shane Berger he said the pitch had a green tinge to it and yet in spite of that they were very very committed to bowling their 10 overs from Hamza Tahir and Mark Watt yesterday was the kind of pitch that you would have perhaps expected Richie Barrington to come on and contribute some quality overs and we saw USA only bowl Nasir Shkenjige for three overs as a frontline spin option. And Nisark Patel contributed part-time spin as a fellow left armor. But USA, in contrast, they were very, very determined to go with medium pace. They felt that was the way. Trying to go with has been their strength on this tour. So Arvnet Chavalker, Cameron Stevenson, USA's leading wicket takers with 10 and 9 wickets respectively. And yet Mark Watt took four wickets in the first match, three wickets again yesterday. So there's been something on offer for everybody. Don't know if it'll be something that will come back to bite UA necessarily. That lack of an extra specialist pace option because the evidence has been that everybody's been able to profit on the bowling side. And it's just a matter of who are your genuine best bowlers? Who do you feel is going to take 10 wickets? And on that standpoint, ordinarily you would think, yeah, Zahur Khan would be somebody you would pick as one of your first choice 11. So from the looks of it, it just seems like maybe he's being rested today. Otherwise, you would expect him to be in the lineup. From a UE perspective, you look at their batting order now as a result of changes they've made today. They have Mohamed Usman at 7, CP Rizwan at 8, Specialist Batsman at 8. Ahmed Raza, certainly no mug with a bat, he's at 9. It's a long tail. Sorry, long batting order. Well, based on the performance they had against USA in the last match here, you can see why Dougie Brown went with an extra batsman today because they got rolled over for 115 and they looked quite brittle in that match. It's really the first time, at least in 50 over cricket, since all the suspensions took place in October and defections to do with the anti corruption charges that you really felt like they were desperately missing somebody on this tour. You feel like they're desperately missing Shaman Anwar. I don't think they've missed Muhammad Naveed so much on the bowling side or Kadir Ahmed. Even necessarily Gulam Shaber, but Shaman Anwar. He's at a different level. Not just to players within the UAE setup. He's at a different level to most players in associate cricket around the world. 
So to have him absent, yes, they felt it a little bit during the T20 qualifier in spite of the fact that they still made the semifinals. You can hide that lack of depth a, a bit more in T20 cricket, though. When they came out and they beat Ireland, Rohan Mustafa played this sensational knock to open that chase, reverse sweeping and sweeping and scooping, doing all sorts of crazy stuff to toy with the Irish bowlers. And it was a fabulously entertaining innings. But to stretch that out across 50 overs, UAE has really struggled here. And Shaman Anwar was that rock who provided that solidity in the middle order more often than not. And you really sense that that's the biggest hole that has been created by all those enforced changes over the last several months. Yeah, absolutely. And not helped in this series by the absence of Rami Shazad as well. He's such a high-quality player in the UAE middle order. Rami's missing due to personal reasons. And you feel he'd have been someone that so often steps up for them when they need him and be a much more assured hand. Especially in the last... Four. Sorry, Barney. Yep. Especially in the last probably year and a half, ever since Division Two in Namibia, 2018 Division Two, he's been an incredibly consistent scoring option. Lovely ball shot. Just lent back Matthew Cross, picked up the length very early. <laughs> that is a dismissive shot. Back to your mark, Janaid. Just shows how true the pitch is. Barney, you said it just a short while ago, how flat it looks. And quite early here, Matthew Cross trusting the pace, trusting the bounce. Ball just sat up and whack over mid-wicket. Brings about a change in the field. Now got a man out there on the fence. The final leg comes into the ring. A deep mid-wicket goes out. The third man stays out on the boundary. It's been a great start from Scotland. Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtzer look superb so far. Seven overs gone. Scotland 42 without loss. We've not seen these sort of quick starts so far. Testament to how good these two look. See Matthew Cross, 14 from 24. From him, two fours to his name. Carl Kurtzer, 25 from 18. See on your screen there. On strike. The rise to silver will continue. <laughs> Big appeal for court behind. The umpire's not interested. Darius De Silva was very confident. Not so much his teammates. I actually thought it was more of an LBW appeal. It's a very thick kind of fleshy sound more than the bat. And it, the way he held his pose looked like maybe he was hit outside the line of off stump. Was it big noise there? Yeah, it's the noise that made me think initially that it was for court behind, but it looks like a very much as Peter said, never doubt Peter Delapena. It looked much more like an LBW decision, just outside the line. It's good from Darius Silver though. Brought it back into Kurtzer. Thing. It could have been bat on pad, too. There was so much going on there as the ball passed the bat. A lot to keep the UA fielders interested. Not sure if it's reflected on the screen quite as much as it is here, but it's got quite gloomy all of a sudden. Great club's production team toying with the white balance on the cameras. <laughs> Ooh, 
Gertz this time. Gertz goes over the top and over to mid wicket. Drive to Silver over pitching. And again, such a dismissive shot. It's Kyle Kutzer's bread and butter. And straight drive over mid on. You don't want to err on the legs to him, especially full. He's effortless flicking that over the ring in the power play. Yeah, he moves on to 29 from 22 balls. Now on your point about this being such a uncharacteristically quick start, at least for this series, Barney, power play is leading into today 38 for 2, 26 for 2, 34 for 2, 44 for 2, Scotland against USA in Sharjah. 46 for 1, 36 for 5, that was UAE against USA. Cut through point, that should race away as well. That long boundary is cut off. You see how big that boundary is. It's timed beautifully. Still didn't quite make it. 53 for one USA yesterday against Scotland, and then Scotland 29 for one yesterday against USA. So Scotland has already eclipsed their best power play of this tri-series previously against USA in Sharjah at 49 for none, and they're just four runs away from the best power play by any team so far in this tri-series. And just to further underscore Barney's point, it just shows how Fantastic this wicket is for the batting side. Yeah, we'll see a change of bowling now. See Roa Mustafa coming to the attack. First sign of spin. As Peter mentioned earlier, it won't be the last of spin we see from the UAE. They've got at least three options in the side. In Roa Mustafa who comes on now, Captain Ahmed Raza, young Kartik Mayapan as well. And then Basil Hamid we saw even bowl some off spinners against the USA a few days ago. Very clever batting from Carl Kurtzer, just pushing it down the ground. Always a sign of how good a touch the batsmen are in when they're driving this confidently and this, this firmly early on. Absolutely. And it's the best opening stand of any team this week. Half century stand already up and just 8.1 overs. It's been something that's been a constant across the first several tri series in this League Two competition. The one in Aberdeen. One in Florida, and now this one. The new ball has been extremely effective at each venue. Very rarely have you seen an opening partnership cross 50. Part of that is just collectively to the, to the increase in the quality of opening bowlers around the associate world. Another lovely drive. Carl Kurtz are just rocking onto the back foot. Short for Roma Staffa. And the timing is exceptional once again. And that is now the highest Power play score of the week, 55 for no loss, and there's still seven balls to go, Barney. It's Mohamed Usman, who was the man beaten at what is a mid-off slash extra cover. And you see he's flexing his knee, pulled up as he gave chase. That's something the UAE will not want to see.
think that's slightly foreshadowing maybe what they feel is in store. They're going to be chasing Leather North a lot today, Barney. 300 plus scores on the cards at this stage. And they've been given quite a workout in this first half hour plus to start the day. Mentioned that quality of bowlers, opening bowlers in particular around the Associate World that's increased in recent times in that first tri-series. Not only did you have the likes of Safian Sharif with Scotland, but you know, Saina Pakana is somebody with Papua New Guinea who is really, really impressed in the last six months, whether in League Two or the 50 over World Cricket League Division Two competition in Namibia took five wickets in a very, very crucial match for Papua New Guinea on the last day of round robin play against Oman that basically saved PNG's skin and got them ODI status ahead of Canada. And then in the T20 qualifier as well as variation to the death in addition to the new ball were exceptional. Norman Vanua along with him has really matured the longer he's been in the senior team, you look at Oman in that tri series as well to start off. Bill Al Khan, Kali Mula, Sorb Neshevalker has been in phenomenal form for USA in the first two tri series. Junaid Siddiqui has held his own here. There's a Huracan. There didn't used to be this much pace bowling depth in the associate world. It was basically Boyd Rankin, Paul Van Maker, and everybody else. It's really, really changed. And what's even more impressive about that is Ali Khan hasn't made a single appearance in that stretch, and he's arguably the most in-demand associate bowler in T20 franchise cricket. It's UAE captain Ahmed Raza who will bowl this final over of the power play. And for one from his first two balls, Mohamed Usman actually went off after we were just discussing that he pulled up, holding his knee. Wahid Ahmed comes on in his place. You see a Scotland flag draped over one of these white fences round the boundary. It's a good sign, isn't it? Good sight. I'm surprised there isn't a, another flag alongside the lion rampant. I was taught very, very harshly, in no uncertain terms, it's not the rampant lion. It's the lion rampant. Don't ever get that wrong. Just feeling the first specks of rain very light hopefully that passes over we do have some blue sky coming over end of that first power play then 10 overs in Scotland making a great start here 58 without loss I see Carl Kurtz are leading the way 38 from 31 balls been excellent so far Matthew Cross going at a slightly slower rate, 17 from 29. Still looked in great form. Feel the droplets. There's some kind of Harry Potter-esque cloud seeding here, Barney, because I'm looking straight up, <laughs> and we've got sun over us, <laughs> and yet I'm feeling the same moisture that you are coming down. <laughs> some strange magic in the air, Barney. Good from Scotland, this. Roma Mustafa and Ahmed Raza are such integral figures in the UAE bowling attack. I feel like if you can milk them and then just put away the bad balls, 
come out the other side in pretty good nick. I see the drops accumulating on my yellow notepad as well, Barney. There's three already, two more, and the car park will be flooded. <laughs> Yeah, the Scotland team will have the plastic fish out on the pitch again. Tucked into the leg side. Fortunately, if we were to have the misfortune of some rain, the drainage is far better here than at Sharjah. Where it's just allowed to puddle and stagnate. Four runs from that Roma staffer over then. Excellent start from Scotland. Carl Kurtzer in particular looks in great nick. Now the sun peeking through the clouds. Very bizarre feel to the weather this morning. wide down the leg side. Siddiqui not the not the quickest across the ground. Cuts that off, it goes for two. Can I mention it before the way some of these guys are running in the field for you, you'd think they'd be running through the muddy puddles at Georgia, their feet stuck in the ground. Siddiqui especially is a very wooden rubber ru runner. What a difference a couple of months makes, Peter. The, during the qualifiers, there were players, I think the Scottish team as well, were struggling a little bit of the heat at the tail end of the UAE summer. Not just the players, the journalists who were covering the event were struggling, Barney. Try coming out here and s sitting or standing or walking around in the heat for seven, eight hours covering two or three matches a day. It was brutal. Players were so pampered with their IV drips. Where was the support for us, Barney? Yeah, we were covering that from gazebos here at the ICC Academy. Just getting baked, weren't we? We got a big industrial-sized fan that was directed into the tent, or out of the tent, actually, because in the tent it was like an oven. 
the heat was being trapped in there. <laughs> Let's pick your poison. Do you want to sit outside and bake in the sun? Or do you want to sit in the tent and be protected from the sun, not get sunburned, but be about 20 degrees hotter inside the tent? Big appeal, but look to be going down the leg side. So that was the previous ball again. A slight groan, Peter. <laughs> Interested? Rohan Mustafa is not a big turner of the ball. And then saved calculators. His leg was more or less on like some fucking down leg. He gave the indications to the umpire, gave him the benefit of the doubt there, but it was a lot closer than I thought it would have been initially. But they've initially gone <laughs> gone up as a proper crowd catch this one. <laughs> See Ro Mustafa holding to Kurt, sir. <laughs> Ro Mustafa <laughs> launching the ball up in the air. Fell just short of him. Encouraging sign though for the UE bowler. Now for context. These two teams do get on quite well off the field. I'm not sure if they would have been interpreted the same way if it was UAE playing against USA. <laughs> we have seen this a bit off the spin bowling so far during this series. Players playing with very hard hands. Could be chance of return catches and maybe even catches short in at, uh, on the drive either side of the wicket. And because of that we've seen short extra cover quite frequently employed and on a few occasions we've even seen a Short mid off, short mid on. And there is a fielder out there. I wouldn't exactly characterize his quote, quote, short mid off. Rohan Mustafa is in there. But he's definitely positioned for that hard handed drive. They've got a long off in place. UAE is in the field who's very wide on the boundary. And then Rohan Mustafa is very straight. Halfway between the circle and the stumps. At kind of a straightish mid-off. As he runs round there. But you can see very much from his stance as Ahmed Raza reaches the pop increase that Rohan Mustafa is a catching position there. Isn't he static? Knees bent. We have seen it a lot. And Ahmed Raza himself took a stunning one-handed catch off his own bowling in Sharjah. And these two, Carl Kurtzer and Matthew Cross, both play with very 
hard hands. It's an interesting one to watch and keep an eye on. Scotland will be very pleased with this start. 69 without loss from 14 overs. That run rate has come down a little bit, as you'd expect really from Ahmed Raza and Roma Mustafa. Such economical goal bowlers. Very much in control of their game. They know how to bowl to their fields and their plans. these two you'd think that Scotland would be pleased just to get through this pairs these uh, their spells because they do have the likes of young Kartik map and to maybe target I was just gonna say you say target I'm keen from a UAE perspective bring him on he likes been as your wicket taker nothing's happening right now and you feel like Kartik map on as young as he is a bit raw but he's somebody in this situation who could create something in the field and disrupt this partnership. Because at the moment, they're just milking singles. There's no pressure really being applied whatsoever. And because of that, if Kartik may happen is leaking runs, so what? Everybody else is being milked for runs too. But at the moment, if you're looking for a wicket, he's probably your best option to turn to. And we've seen, you were discussing it on commentary, how a lot of these teams have used short bursts from their bowlers, little two-over spells here and there to try and make something happen. In this situation, when they're getting milked and the partnership is so settled, it's, is the other thing to keep in mind in that context of short burst bowling you don't want to burn 10 straight on Rohan Mustafa right here or Ahmed Raza for that matter when they don't have the opportunity to work on a new batsman to tie them down with pressure yeah it'll be interesting to see how UE balance these bowlers And there will be a change here. Doris de Silva come into the attack in place of Ahmed Raza. Thank you to Peter Della Pena for joining us. This first 15 overs. Scotland very much on top. 74 without loss. We've avoided any serious rain. Just those few specks that have fell on us. My and slaps the floor, floor in disappointment, letting that go through him at point. And the UAE want to build some pressure. They don't need that. Heed Ahmed has just come off the pitch. Mohamed Usman is back on. Good sign. His knee struggles. Not as bad as first thought. It's well fielded by UE captain Ahmed Raza. For a big man, very athletic in the field. Oh, 
is in the air for a very long time. Basil Hamid at cover would have been interested for a while. It lands safely. You'll see the scoring rate has come down a nudge. Scotland, Carl Kurtz was going at over a runner ball. He slowed just slightly. Hammered down the ground from Matthew Cross. Just back of a length. And Matthew Cross, you see what we were saying about the the true bounce on this pitch. He trusts it, throws his hands through the ball. Goes over mid-off and all the way around down to that mid-off boundary for four. Cross moving on to 28 now. See, these two have been superb. Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtzer putting on 80 so far for this opening Scotland wicket after being put into bat by the UAE. See the four bowlers used so far. Junaid Siddiqui, Darius De Silva, who's taking on new ball bowling here. He's gone for a few so far. Roma Mustafa and Abed Raza were tight for their short spells. And we now see... Young Kartik may happen. Come into the attack in just his second game for UAE. The young leg spinner. It's part of that under 19 squad that will be going to the ICC Cricket World Cup, under 19 World Cup in South Africa at the start of next year. One of three teenagers called into this UAE squad. Jonathan Figgy making his debut today as well, and Richard Aravin, the 17 year old, behind the stumps. A slip in place. It's a good start from Mayapan. He did this very well in Sharjah when he made his debut against the USA. Started very well. Very nice line and length. Excellent from my appen here. Four dot balls to start. This is first over. 19 year old leg spinner. Up north for 39 against the USA in his debut. That one a bit flatter, a bit quicker. Still very good length and it's well fielded. Jonathan Figgy on debut, the man doing the fielding. 
just 18 himself. And Kurtzer looks to sweep. May happen. This line erred slightly. Tucked away. Just for two. A very good start from Mayapun. 19 year old leg spinner. Dubai playing in just his second game. He's gone for two. Very, very good start from him. As Peter was saying, he could play a pivotal role as USA look to break this partnership in particular. The UAE, in fact, is a host here of this tri series. Carl Kurtzer, one of those two runs, edges a little closer to. 50, 47 now from 56 balls. It'll be Matthew Cross on strike. It's Doris De Silva. Continues. Mayapun is beaten by the spin there. It shouldn't have really been a single. It's twice now in a space of a couple of overs. He's fielding at that key area of backward point. He's let two go through him. It's beaten by the spin of the ball there. Carl Kurtzer comes on the strike. 48 from 57. Drive to silver the bowler. Four balls into his sixth over. drive from Carl Kurtzer. No signals. It suggests there was a nick on it. And Richard Aravind. The keeper behind the stumps. There was a shout of catch here, but it seemed like a half-hearted shout. Chance, maybe. Very difficult. Aravin driving, diving low in front of him and to his left. Like it may have just carried. A nudge down the ground ends the 18th over. Scotland 87 without loss. And it will be time for a drink.
players have just had a drink and cart it me up and we'll continue for the UAE. Started so well in his first over. Went for just two. Well fielded by Jonathan Figgy, 18 year old on debut today. Keeps Kurtzer on 49. It's a big expansive drive, he hit it very firmly. Excellent over from Kartik Mayapun. UE leg spinner. Went for one. Single off that first ball and then five dots to Carl Kurtzo. Still on 49. Superb over from that lad there. Mayapun. Two overs. He's just gone for three runs so far. Excellent stuff from the young leg spinner. It's confidently slotted into this UAE side. Good start to the over from Darius to Silva. As we mentioned earlier, it's, you know, it's a bit of a surprise seeing him even turn his arm over the other day. Now, taking on the new ball, opening the bowling for the UAE in place of Zahu Khan. He started very well in this over. Three dot balls. Single, bring Carl Kurtzer back on the strike. 49 from 63 balls for the Scotland captain.
It's a loose drive outside off stump. The silver beating the outside edge of the Scotland captain. He's been stuck on 49 for a few balls now. And this time, Kurtz clips into the leg side. 35-year-old Scottish captain brings up his 17th ODI half-century. It's been a fine knock so far. Scotland off to a very good start. 90 without loss from 20. Carl Kurtz, who's 50, coming off of 65 balls, includes five fours. He may have slowed down the last few overs. The UE looked to rein Scotland in. But he's looked in very good touch, right from ball one. He'll keep the strike. Cart it may happen. He's looking for his first wicket in ODI cricket. He'll continue. Started very well here, the UE leg spinner. Finds the outside edge. He races down to third man. He's up in the circles. Roe Mustafa who does the fielding. And that slip that had been in place. And Kartik Mayap and started his spells. Ahmed Raza, UAE captain. He's pulled himself out now. Is that one of those short, straight catching positions that we've mentioned before with players playing with hard hands to the spinners? see a change now. Ahmed Raza taking himself out of that straight position that we were saying about. Puts position himself back in at first slip. <sighs> Excellent from my appen. Excellent stuff here from my appen to Matthew Cross. You see the replay of that ball. Just turns away from him. It was absolutely superb piece of bowling from Myappen. Pitching on middle and off and just breaking away. Very impressive for a teenager just in his second senior game for the UAE. Ripping that past the outside edge of Matthew Cross. There's the end of another excellent over from my Appen. He's gone for four from it. He looks a serious talent, this young UE leg spinner. First three overs here have gone for seven. And he has made things happen. Found the outside edge in that over. 
and then beat the outside edge it with a absolute beauty Right, just drives to silver into his eighth over. It's run down to third man for two. Beats my appen at point. Couldn't do much about that one. He has let two through him. He's bowled superbly. Thus far. You can see how UAE balance their bowling attack from here. Darius De Silva and Junaid Siddiqui, the only seamers in the squad today. De Silva coming up to bowl the end of his eighth over. Imagine he might keep, Hamid Raza would want to keep two of his back. Possibly for the death, Roy Mustafa also an excellent death bowler. He was darting off spinning Yorkers. It was in the air, safe. Over the head of Jonathan Figgy. Scotland, 98 without loss. 22 overs. Quickly see those bowling figures. Janay Siddiqui has six left. Roma Staffa six as well. Ahmed Raza seven, as does Karti Mayappan, who will continue now. S still plenty left in the tank. Be interesting to see how they juggle those bowlers. I 
driven firmly over the man at cover and it goes away for four. It's Junaid Siddiqui out long off. Just tried to race round and cut it off. Might happen. Offering just a bit of width. And with that boundary, it brings up the 100 partnership for these two. Scotland 102 without loss. And Yui desperately in need of a wicket. And after ignoring my WhatsApp messages and my phone calls, distracting Chirag Suri at third man, Paul Radley from the National joins us on commentary. Scotland going very nicely so far. Yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I was checking my phone because I knew you were going to message. Here now, though. Stop complaining. Where you were stationed at third man, was that to see young Mayapun and what he's doing with the ball? It's a quite nice, comfy seat under the trees, Barney, in the shade. Happily sit over there all day. Um... No, it's a good, good angle to see from. Um, I think tough day so far for UAE. Could get tougher. Just found out that's that whole Khan actually would have been it was quite a big miss this morning. So uh, got a little groin niggle. Um, so UAE got well extremely inexperienced side anyway. Exper inexperienced attack. Darius to Silver opening the bowling, having only bowled for the first time for the country the other day. Junaid Sadiq at the other end a little bit loose as well. Allowed Scotland to get off to a pretty promising start, didn't they, Barney? Yeah, were you surprised? Obviously, nothing they can do about Zahor Khan's injury. Were you surprised that they've just got two seamers and one of them, only one of them, is a front line seamer? Yeah, it's shown up really by uh, by Zahor's injury. But the stocks aren't obviously that great. Obviously, some very conspicuous tees. On it. While we were down, um, while I was down at my on my perch at third man there, um, there was a young academy boy shouted over the picket fence to Chirag Suri, "Why is Navid not playing?" <laughs> to, to which Chirag came straight back with, "You might want to read the papers." <laughs> <laughs> but obviously deprived Naveed is the spearhead of this attack for so many years and also Kadir Ahmad a uh, very useful foil for for him as well so it's perhaps no surprise that the stocks are a little bit bare once uh, somebody like Zahul Khan goes down with an injury as well there's only so many so many players you can find to fill these spaces once you've had six players absent for such a big thing as there has been anyway. That'll be Ahmed Raza to replace Saris de Silva. Just mentioning, be interesting to see how Ahmed Raza balances his bowlers through the remainder of these overs. Saris de Silva has two remaining be saved for a little later on. When you look at the squad that you have put together for this today, their batting lineup is incredibly deep. Do you think they could have had someone like a certain left arm seamer that we saw in press in the T10 ah, as no. feature in the squad? I found out about this. A bit more intel on this, Barney. Uh, Shiraz Ahmed, I assume you're clearly referring to from the T10 was outstanding certainly the uh, leading UAE player in that tournament a sharp run yeah so each of the teams in the T10 Abu Dhabi T10 as it's known now 
have one mandated player per per eleven at least has to be a UAE player, and always backed those players. But Zah, uh, sorry, Shiraz Ahmed, very little known. We knew nothing about him, did we, Barney? Before before that tournament, um, was really backed by the Maratha Arabians, who went on to win the tournament. He was getting rave reviews from Andy Flower, the coach. Dwayne Bravo, the captain, said he was a real kingpin for them. Well fielded by Mohamed Usman on this boundary right in front of us here. Yeah, so uh, obviously to not see his name in the squad for, um, for this series, bearing in mind how outstanding he was in, in the T10, and obviously as we've just mentioned with the limited numbers of seam bowling options that the UA have got presently um, was a big shock for us wasn't it but it uh, yeah just on further discussions I think the admin over his eligibility is a bit of an issue even though he's been in this country as a resident for eight years sweat, oh, sweat. beautifully behind square beats the man a short fine leg and Usman who cut off that sweep shot so well just before can't get around there it's a lovely, lovely sweep shot from Matthew Cross. <laughs> Moves across his stumps and sweeps firmly for four. Yeah, so Shiraz um, apparently has had too many days, even though he's lived here for eight years, when residency I think is three years. He's had um, issues with spending too long in big chunks out of the country at given times and not fully completed his residency eligibility messed it up a couple of times which is massive loss for UA cricket because he looks like a real gem of a talent just a bit of a jet setter is he? Uh, I think he's either that or he's a bit daisy <laughs> when it comes to working things out Because he's very keen, we've spoken to him during the T10 to represent the country, to earn a central contract even, some job stability. Lovely throw by Mohamed Usman <laughs> <laughs> from this boundary out here. Right over the top. The umpires will like him. They've been keeping keen eyes on people bouncing it in. They were despairing <laughs> at the end of that last over and Sadiq just basically rolled one all the way from the boundary. <laughs> I'm guessing Junaid Sadiq, he's out here at long off, he does his fielding here. He's a good catcher of the ball because he's not the most mobile in the outfield. He's not, uh, no. You you'd probably have him down that is. Your standard fast bowler, or perhaps old-fashioned fast bowler, because appreciate a lot of international fast bowlers these days that are very good fielders, but looks to be of the old school in terms of being slightly less athletic. One guy I have picked up on so far as being a great addition in terms of fielding, as we were talking about. Bowler now, Kartik Mehapan, real athlete in the field. Yeah, mentioning previously that he let a couple through he at did. a backward point. He but he has he's very alert, he's yep. very alive. Covers a lot of ground. Yeah, you're right. He d and he was visibly very frustrated with one earlier on. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but Mohammed Usman, who's doing the fielding there, furious with himself that he didn't cut it off. And it brings up Matthew Cross, his half century, going off 71 balls. These two have been excellent for Scotland. A big shake of the hands between the pair. Now put on 119. Matthew Cross joins his captain in reaching 50. It's here from 71 balls, four fours in that innings as well. Yeah, as Mohammed Usman in front of us, let out a big groan. He didn't cut that off before they ran two. But 
it might happen. Second game. 5 0 has gone for 20. Like in Sharjah, he started so well at the beginning of that spell, or this spell. Very impressive, isn't it? Leg spinner to have that control, and a leg spinner who's 18 years old. Really impressive. Just point out that halfway through the overs now, Scotland 119 for no loss. That is a very strong platform when you've got a middle order of Callum McLeod, Richie Berrington and George Munsey at six to follow. So much power in that middle order. You'd have thought by the time they come in, if they if they even do come in, they'll have license. Concerning times for UAE. Yeah, and be even beyond that, you've got Dylan Budge and Joshua Davey, who we've seen score runs here. Davey was excellent yesterday, helping his side over the line against the USA. Forgetting Michael Jones coming in at three. As you look, hit some crisp drives yesterday and was informed before that too. Yes, an ominous platform if you're a UAE fielder out there. I think they're only plus so far as it's not too hot out there. Mm. As you arrived today, Paul, we caught glance of each other and shouted Figgy. <laughs> we were excited, weren't we? Poor lad, we're heaping so much pressure on him. <laughs> <laughs> Based on some schoolboy cricket, <laughs> he is the saviour. Very much looking forward to seeing him back later on, 18-year-old. All of a sudden, that top order is slated to come in at three. There's a 17-year-old and an 18-year-old. And there's a elder statesman of Chirag Suri. And 24, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's noticeable. <laughs> Ahmed Raza and Ryan Mustafa are a couple of really good athletes themselves, actually, in the field. Both 31 years old, until recently, were two of the three younger youngest players in the team <laughs> now notable when the when the match started they had um they're fielding in the old man positions of first and second <laughs> slip <laughs> it's down the leg side and there's bat on it runs away for four swept and must have got a thin edge First, I thought it might have been a wide. It wasn't a noise or anything. It raced away. Where's the weather coming from here, Barney? Because it's coming from uh, Long On, or Cow Corner even, as the batsmen are facing up at the moment. And that looks looking pretty grey. Yeah, we discussed this earlier. We had specks of rain here yep. at the start. Peter had three on his yellow pad, his yellow <laughs> score pad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it luckily passed over us. But if you look all around us, really, apart from the just above the pitch currently, it's pretty grim. It's very gloomy. It's been threatening rain all all morning, really. Can you imagine if, for the second time <laughs> this second week, <laughs> Scott, yeah. Scotland UAE. Scott would be spitting, I'd have thought, given the start they've made to this game. Yeah, it's been excellent from these two. As Kartik Mayappen continues, young leg spinner. We saw earlier on, oh, Kurt to go straight down the ground and all the way for six, straight over the head of Kartik Mayappen. Excellent shot from Carl Kurtzer. Striking superbly through the line. See the replay here. Clears that front leg. He has a very open stance already, so he doesn't have to move it too far out legs that ex outside of leg stump. Clean strike of the ball that there, wasn't it, Paul? Having a good day so far. Lost the toss and then 
this is the position they're in. I did actually hear when I was down, sat on the near the fence at third man, Chirag Shuri muttering to himself, "Why can't we lose these tosses?" <laughs> Not sure it's done quite. Perhaps they didn't bowl quite as they'd have wanted to at the start. But I think that they feel that it's not done quite what they thought it would do, given the experience of the previous two games here on this pitch that have offered a bit for the seam bowlers. Yeah, we've seen it swing up top. We've seen it seam a little. And today is hazy, overcast conditions for large parts early on. But it, and Siddiqui, we've seen him move the ball as well, both in Sharjah and here in Dubai. He had no luck. Darius De Silva nip, nipped a couple back. But it didn't do a huge amount. There wasn't a huge amount of assistance. When you compare that to yesterday, when we saw Srebnetra Valka swinging it quite early. Another thing that Chirag pointed out was that there's not been quite so much carry as we've seen. Perhaps the bowlers obviously aren't as quick as the likes of... Rusty Theron and Cameron Stevenson. Even guys a little bit with a little bit less pace than, than those guys. Josh Davy hit somebody on the head yesterday. So there was a lot of carry on the wicket then. I fear we might be getting a bit of rain in a minute. Clouds looking up. <laughs> really odd looking clouds actually. Oh, that's a storm coming. Bizarre. Very odd looking. Clouds at Armageddon is on its way. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be laughing if it does, will we? Yeah, and you can see Ahmed Razu, the UAE captain, will be bowling here. So he's got a very keen eye, trained on those clouds. And it's got very dim suddenly here. It has been hazy and grey. And now we have these very dark clouds. But then with swirling spots of brightness as well. Although... We still look on that bright. <laughs> <laughs> Brightness looks like it's heading in the other direction. Don't know if you picked that up on the camera, but <laughs> Paul just mentioning I think we're going to get wet. <laughs> we just have a couple of brollies <laughs> and a lot of electric. <laughs> it's driven in the air. Oh, put down. It's a big chance. It's Kurtzer driving outside the off stump from Ahmed Raza. It's Chirag Suri diving full length. You see the replay here. It's wide and driven upish from Kurtzer. And Suri, well you see him, the end of his dive, but he got there. Would have been a good catch. You'd expect him to take it once he's there, though. It's a very good fielder, Chirag Suri, for UAE. It seemed to go to him a bit slower than he may have thought. He set off quite early, but it wasn't. It wasn't racing towards him. Kurtz at this time. More confident strike down the ground, but nearly carried to long off again. Oh, and this time's bold. Reverse sweeping, Matthew Cross. And Ahmed Raza, the UAE captain, gets that important breakthrough, much needed for the UAE. We haven't seen Matthew Cross unfill the reverse sweep so far today. He does so for the first time. To see the replay. It's bold leg stump. He's gone so far over to the offside. 
Sign of Scotland's plans there. Promoting George Munsey up from listed position. We have him here as number six going in next. Eek. You see one of the match officials summoning <laughs> the ground staff. <laughs> Go and grab the covers, boys. Very important breakthrough. And as Paul mentions, Munsey promoted up to three. A real sign of intent, that, from Scotland. See that wicket again. See Matthew Cross go so far over to his off stump. And the line's probably not there. He's premeditated the shot. Just clips leg stump. And Ahmed Raza, a little twirl of the finger. Off your pop. A fine innings, 138 run partnership, set up a very good platform for Scotland to go and build on now. So uh, Munzee will face his first ball. Ahmed Raza now come over the wicket to the left-hander. And young Kartik may happen coming into first slip. Floodlight's just gone on. Yeah, it sh highlights how grey it is here. 10 to 12, usually require floodlights at this in this part of the world at 10 to 12. Potentially a big passage of play now. If the UAE can turn the screw a little bit, pick up Carl Kurtzer, his prized wicket now. 78 not out, the Scotland captain. They could open the door a little. I think they'd need these two. A couple more thereafter. <laughs> oh, that's what sa as you said, Barney, Scotland have got such a good platform to attack from, in th from now. That 138 run opening partnership. And they have the players to attack it as well. Richie Barrington. Michael Jones still. Callum McLeod, who's been in excellent form. And then still the all-rounders, Davy and Budge. Figgy, fielding like a trialist. I like the look of that. It's been noticeable the amount of encouragement he's got from his teammates making his ODI debut today. Anything he's done in the field, whether it's returning the field from the boundary in front of us a few overs ago, to then those stops in at cover where he's been, he's been driven out very hard on a number of occasions. And you see everyone rallies round him very quickly. Just thought another bowling option, seam bowling option for UA would be, just talking about Figgy there, there's another student in the UK, Yodin Punja. Oh, uppish. Would be a very useful pace bowling option for this team and again bring the average age down even further. 
Uh, but he actually, I believe, dislocated his shoulder in a uh, on a tour with his with his um, university. I think it's Cardiff University in the UK to South Africa earlier this year before the summer started. Otherwise, I'd have thought he'd be firmly in their thoughts as well. Another member of the under-19 side? No, too old for that. Um, just a little bit older than the other guys. U UA's youngest ever debutant, I think even... He'd probably still hold that that record ahead of uh, Fritti Aravind. I'm pretty sure Yodin was only 16 when he made his debut against Hong Kong at this ground. Ahmed Raza also captain in that series. <laughs> Must feel like the kindergarten cop. Ahmed Usman does well to get round there and keep the ball in play. Very good sweep from George Munzee. An ominous sign that he's timing his sweep shots early on. Mm. Going to be a real test for Kartik Mayapan. My app of a big appeal to finish that over. It looked very leg side though. Another good one though from the young spinner. Gone for just three. Scotland 141 for one. Carl Kurtzer, 79 from 92 deliveries. It's been excellent, the Scotland captain. He'll face his counterpart from the UAE, Ahmed Raza. Currently, the grey clouds haven't offered anything to us. We're very fortunate, weren't we, if that passes by without, without getting us wet. Swept so firmly in towards it, us. Oh. Crashes into the fence in front of us. Very good sweep shot. Carl Kurtzer. Hit that very hard. You see the replay here. Ahmed Raza just straying leg side. See Kurtzer's played that on line more than anything. So you just see our table there, can you, or not quite? I was straight in line with that, and Barney Reed was ready to field it. Pounced. Even though it, I knew it was going to hit the fence. It still made me jump. I didn't notice actually. <laughs> We're acting quite cool about it. I was concerned. It was struck very firmly. Mohamed Usman moving across in front of us. It's a very good number seven, isn't he? <laughs> slated very to be good number seven, yeah. Slated to be Rizwan. seven today. CP Rizwan at eight, a specialist batsman as well. A response to their batty performance against the USA? P or perhaps just uh, perhaps a response to Zaha Khan's injury. I'm not sure really. I 
Ones he's. Hmm. It's a debate here. Something interesting, Ahmed Raza, the captain, didn't quite notice what that was. Did you, Barney? No, I didn't. Eagle eyes. Beats the outside edge. Interesting, Munzee looking to play a lot straighter early on than the last time we saw him playing against the UAE when everything was a reverse sweep and highly successfully too. Wonder what that's a response to. Perhaps it's just the fact that Ahmed Raza has set the field specifically for his sweep and he's got guys out back with a square on both sides of the wicket. Or, does it something to do with Sa Darren Sammy's comments? In the T10 League? For those of us joining us today, we mentioned it yesterday on, on commentary. That Darren Sammy was critical of George Munsey opening the batting in the T10, sweeping and reversing too often. The hallmarks of his game. Could possibly be an adjustment. I suppose different format too. You T20, you've got to obviously sort of go from from ball one near enough. Here he's got a few overs to play straight and play himself in. And then launches assault, no doubt. Yes, yeah, the luxury of that opening partnership and the platform that Scotland have given them. Still 19.5 overs remaining. Plenty of time for both these players to go on and make a make big scores. Now Mustafa hasn't got anyone out for that shot. But still Manzi plays straighter. Yeah, it's man out of square leg, isn't there? But there wasn't one at point. Again as well, this, uh, this is interesting. It's just the mid-wicket for the right-hander. See, there's a man at extra cover on the boundary. He's just moving round now, actually. But still, behind square, Mending it now. Did notice after the World T20 qualifier, or T20 World Cup qu qualifier, I should say, an exchange on Twitter between Mustafa and Munzi. Mustafa telling him he was not allowed to reverse sweep anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that Peter Delapena was mentioning earlier on commentary. These two sides get on very well. Friendly rivalry, definitely a rivalry though. I don't know actually, I suppose Scotland turned up for this series and had to introduce himself to most of the UAE players <laughs> never met before. That's good cricket by Munzee. Finds the gap that had just been vacated by the fielding change. Yeah, the man from cover had moved round to point you say to cut off that reverse sweeping option he did very well as Paul suggests there driving into that vacant area to pick up two to end the over it looks like stiggy and doom all around the weather yeah pretty sure we've been bypassed no rain fallen very lucky It's quite incredible that we've avoided some foul weather there. Oh, they're still very grey, isn't it? Barney, I'm not sure of this regulation or ruling. Now the floodlights are on, do they stay on all day? So I put you on the spot there, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you need Peter Della Pena. <laughs> Seems like a drastic waste of money and energy if they do. Climate crisis, a bit more important than 
keeping the floodlights on for some regulation for the rest of this game. Sadiqi's back into the attack. Excellently taken. He was talking about Karti Mayapan's fielding earlier, and he's at backward point there. Good catch, and George Runge is gone. Just you know, seven. Quite a good angle on that catch we've got here, and as ah, you'll see it hopefully on the replay, if they cut back to the angle from the top of the roof, the players' area. Mm, just blocked out by the graphic, but. Yeah, it might happen. Like hundred percent confident as he was falling, he got to it perfectly. Went into his hands, and just as his elbows hit the floor, he looked down in a little bit of panic to see where the ball was, and it was still nestling in his hands. Big wicket for UAE that. A very big wicket. Munzi, such a dangerous player in these situations. And I see Callum McLeod coming at four. It's where he was slated to bat anyway, but Michael Jones is gradually slipping down the order. 156 for two, Junaid Siddiqui making a almost instant impact coming back into the attack, picking up his first wicket of the day. He has to be a real spearhead now for the UAE. It's the only front line seamer in this side. Shouldering a huge amount of responsibility Young Kartik may happen. Doing the necessary, taking a catch there. Callum McLeod hit 86 versus USA. First time those two sides met and then hit 62 yesterday. Third highest run scorer now in ICC Cricket World Cup League 2 he's looked in great form but in the first game his wicket caused the USA uh, sorry the Scotland's demise it almost looked like it yesterday yeah we well. felt that was going to be the case didn't we and Davy, Sharif and some pretty questionable bowling bowling planning by the USA in the latter overs saw them through and McLeod's dismissal Count it for naught in the end. He's been an excellent touch. Hitting 148 across those two games so far. Rare bouncer by the UA today. As, as we were saying on commentary yesterday, it felt like every other ball was a bouncer by the States, United States bowlers. Scotland sent down a few themselves, but UA really haven't tested out in the middle of the wicket at all today. Yeah, and the short ball brought about that wicket of Munzee as well. Could be a ploy. Siddiqui back into the attack in his fifth over. Maybe bend his back for a little bit and test the middle of the wicket. But, uh, just 11 short of his century. Fine knock so far. There 
is Siddiqui, he'll bowl to the Scotland captain, Kurtzer. Kurtzer drives off the back foot. It's in the air for a while. Lands safely. And then beat Nyapen at backward point. Kurtzer moves into the 90s. He's on to 91 from 99 deliveries. As Paul mentioned, it's been a superb knock from the Scotland captain so far. You see a Scotland flag fluttering over that part of the ground. I imagine Paul, you'd Love to see a UAE flag and a group of UAE fans turn up at some stage. It'd be nice, yeah. Some point during the next decade. It's something that for us who have watched, and yourself in particular, have watched a lot of UAE cricket over the years. It's disappointing, isn't it, that it you never is. see. Actually, you know that the players put in a lot of hard work and are very proud to represent the country underappreciated in terms of people at the uh, people at the ground not unique to them it must be said cricket in this country but the cure its egg difficult to work out why some matches do attend uh, do attract supporters and others don't obviously most cricket on Fridays gets get some people through the doors but other than that Sometimes you can have a big crowd for some games that just feels really arbitrary that that's the case. Something L you sorry you'd like the ECB to address in terms of trying to. Can you think of a solution? Well, I, know, I know we've had our heads together on this a few times down the years. Tricky thing is, it's not too many champions of the sport I think outside of yourself really operating and working in the media and your good self as well Barney <laughs> I think they need to be made heroes of there's some fine cricketers in this side and some very good blokes as well perhaps Mr. Mr. Good Window of Opportunity when they were sponsored for a number of years by OSN TV network over here in the USA uh, in the <laughs> USA did exactly that the opposite way around yesterday. UAE even. Um, as sponsors, you'd have hoped they'd have got on the TV and been a bit more visible at, at that point in time. Didn't happen and won't happen again because OSN are uh, not quite the backers of sport as they used to be. Former employees of myself. Difficult one for you to comment on, blame isn't it, Varney? Blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they they have lacked visibility, though, haven't they? The UE, they've been to World Cups since I've been here. They've yeah. been on good big stages. Mm. They've had some fine cricketers come through. They've had some fine series here as well. Yeah, you looked at the Nepal one, where there's so many fans in here from Nepal it's the kind of thing that you'd yeah. want there to be more visibility of and the players could all walk down the street and not be noticed couldn't they and could even wear their tracksuits with their names on the back <laughs> and <laughs> not be none of us a real pity because they give so much give so much to um, make the best of themselves and do well for the country's cricket team need to be, as you say, celebrated a lot more than they are. They deserve it. Oof. Oh! Oh, it's a bit of pain there. Yes. The reverse sweep comes out from Callum McLeod and it looks like he got caught in the neck. Uh, yeah, I think his injury might actually be he slipped forward. Mm. His front foot slipped from under him. And his leg was stretched out, and he might have hurt his. Uh, he immediately grabbed his hamstring, but it looks like looks like it's quickly recovered. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, he slipped forward. You see there, Paul mentions he grabbed his hamstring and it hit him, I think, in the chest in the end. <laughs> he got himself in a pickle there. There you go, LBW appeal. Chest before wicket. Asking for a change of footwear for him. I think that was what Kurtz was shouting back to the dressing room. Perhaps he's just got half spikes on. Yeah, we've mentioned here at ICC Academy, especially yesterday, where there's big footfall of people coming in and out. It's those sort of moments you'd like, if the UAE are playing, to be sort of capitalised on mm. people pointed in the right direction. Yeah. Wouldn't be anything wrong with having a few posters of the players at the front. S something to alert people to the fact that they're that they're playing. So players let's have a quick drink and Callum McLeod will probably change that footwear as Paul mentioned. As the players have a quick drink here, see the scorecard so far. Scotland, 164 for two, given that excellent platform by Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtzer. Cross fell for 53 eventually, bowled by Amid Raza, getting a reverse sweep out and exposing his leg stump. Carl Kurtzer still there, stunning knock from the Scotland captain thus far, 94 from 103 balls. Munzee, the other man to go, caught a backward point by young Kartik Mayapan. Off of Siddiqui, second ball of his second spell. Callum McLeod, he's been in superb form from the first two games. New man in, plenty of batting still to come for Scotland as well. Richie Barrington, Dylan Budge, Joshua Davey, Michael Jones. Plenty of batting, and they've got a great platform. At least 17 overs to go and post a very big total. Having been put into bat as well by the UAE. And thus far... You see the two wicket takers, Ahmed Raza, one for 36 from his seven. By his standards, going over five is actually fairly expensive. You normally see him go for about that off his 10. He has three remaining. Janae Siddiqui as well, one for 28 from his five. So he has five overs in the bank. Darius to Silva, another two. Rur Mustafa, five. Three for Ahmed Raza, and two still left for young leg spinner. Kartik Mayapan, who's going in search of his first ODI wicket in just his second match, the 19 year old. If you're just joining us, it's blustery conditions. We had grey skies, thought there'd be rain. Managed to avoid it so far. The lights are on. Gives you an example of how dim it is. Here at the ICC Academy in Dubai, the final game then of this tri series. It's a third stop on the ICC Cricket World Cup League Two calendar. Road to India in the 2023 Cricket World Cup. Where qualification takes place over the next three years. USA finished their series yesterday. With defeat to Scotland. Currently lead the way in this table. Maybe the top three from League Two that advances the World Cup qualifier, of which two teams then join the tournament proper. Meanwhile, the bottom four can still qualify virtue of the playoffs, where they'll be joined by the top two from ICC's Challenge League, which actually been taking place in Oman 
over the past few days. Uganda top that currently with 10 points from five games. Hong Kong in second with seven points. Italy from in third with five. Jersey then one back in with four. Kenya have three points and then Bermuda are bottom of that group with one. All six of those teams have played five. Said Uganda, perfect so far. Five from five. Currently, it's them that are on course to join those playoffs. See as the wind blows across this ground, you see the sand being kicked up. It becomes very dusty all of a sudden here at the ICC Academy. That's Janae Tadiki bowling a six over. Callum McLeod uppercutting to third man. And it should be cut off. Darius De Silva. First of all, shouts of catch it. It didn't quite fall to him. He's running round from third man. You can see here, just uppercutted. Big shouts of catch it. And Darius De Silva can't even keep the ball in play after, get, uh, after getting to it. Porn, sloppy fielding from the UAE. It's drawn frustrated responses from the players. Lots of hands on hips. Great release for Scotland. Top ball to finish the end of Janae Tadiki, sixth over. Gone for six. Should have been less had Darius De Silva managed to cut that boundary off. Scotland 170 for two, 16 overs to go in a very strong position. Carl Kurtzer, 95 not out from 104 balls. Scotland captain. Certainly leading the way for his team. Looks like we'll see Rohan Mustafa come back into the attack. For the UAE. Ryan 
Jack's bowled five overs so far, gone for 20. No, he's put given the ball back to his skipper. It'll be my appen. To bowl his ninth over. It's a big conference between Ahmed Raza and former captain Roa Mustafa about whether Mustafa was going to take the 35th over. They thought against it. My appen. Leg spinner comes back on to bowl. Carl Kurtz are on strike, nearing a century. He drives loosely outside off Sturm. Myappen has his first ODI wicket, and it's a big one. Carl Kurtzer has batted so well for his 95, driving outside off stump, loosely giving it away. And what a moment for Kartik Mayappan. The 19-year-old picking up his first ODI wicket for the UAE. You see Carl Kurtzer driving loosely, his bottom hand coming off of the bat. And young Jonathan Figgy on debut. Takes what's a routine catch in the end. Ends a stunning knot from Carl Kurtzer. They'd be enormously disappointed to have somewhat thrown it away when he had a fifth ODI century in sight. It means Richie Berrington comes to the crease for Scotland. We're now 170 for free. Suddenly, the UAE have two new men at the crease and an opportunity to really pull Scotland back in. After that 138-run partnership between Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtzer, look like they're on to post a monster total. And now they need a little bit of rebuilding, but they have two fine players at the crease still that the UAE will need to contend with. Richie Barrington and Callum McLeod. What a moment for Kartik Mayappan. He's deserved a wicket. He's bowled superbly. He went wicketless in Sharjah against the USA. He impressed then as well on debut. But now he has his first senior wicket. First ODI wicket. A fantastic moment for the leg spinner. See Ahmed Raza coming in at slip now, the captain. UE looking to attack the new man, Richie Barrington. And there is Ahmed Raza, his slips picked out. Richie Barrington driving outside off stump. Two wickets in three balls for Kartik Mayappan. And that's why Ahmed Raza was moved in there at slip. The leg spinner forcing the drive and just turning it away from Richie Barrington. And it's a great catch from Ahmed Raza, low in front of him. Barrington just checking. If everyone was happy with it, they carried. And Barrington trudges off for a second ball duck. And Kartik Mayappan, excellent from him. What a decision this was from the UAE to not give the ball to Roma Staffer and to keep Kartik Mayappan on for his ninth over. And you see the bottom right of your screen there. Two wickets from the first four balls. No runs. As Dylan Budge comes in. Scotland, 170 for four. And they're at real risk of undoing all that fine work that saw them 138 without loss. 
cart it might happen. The 19 year old. It's been absolutely excellent here. Dragging his side right back into it. And we have some more specks of rain falling here at the ICC Academy now. Threatened to interrupt us all morning. And it's the first moment, really, that UAE will be hoping to really stay on and press home. This sudden advantage might happen. Excellent in his ninth over here. It's Dylan Budge, the new man in. This Scotland batting order's really changed. This morning, Munzee was pushed up to three. Seen Budge now come in at six. Michael Jones was down at three initially. Slowly slid down the order. And it's a double wicket maiden for Kartik Mayappan. Superb from the young leggy. Scotland, 170 for four. 35 overs gone. 15 remaining. Biamid Razo brings himself back into the attack. And he'll be delighted at how his young leg spinner has hauled his team back into this. It's not over yet. Callum McLeod at the crease has been in exceptional form. Dylan Budge is impressed as well when he's been given the opportunity. Came back in the side today. They've been left out of yesterday's victory. Club's team who helped with the production of this stream, just sorting umbrellas out and bin liners to try and cover all the electrics. It does feel like rain's imminent. Big appeal for LBW. Turned down by the umpire. Looked like Budge had just got himself outside the line of off stump. Yeah, just marginally outside off stump. Very good for Ahmed Raza, really attacking the stumps, putting the new batsman under pressure, and all of a sudden, the UAE fielders are very vocal of their encouragement. Those two wickets from Cartier might happen, really bringing the field alive. Just three runs from Ahmed Raza's over there. He's eighth. He's gone for 39. So far, 14 overs to go. Scotland, 173 for four. Callum McLeod on 10. Dylan Budge, it's the one. 
Cut it by Apple and will bowl his tenth over, having picked up a double wicket maiden with his last. Can he pick up a third? All important wicket of Callum McLeod. Cloud drives into the offside, just be one. But with that slip in place, Ahmed Raza, your e captain in that position, he won't be too put off by Callum McLeod driving like that outside off stump. That ends excellent performance from Kartik Mayapin with the ball. Two for 39 from his 10 overs. Picking up those two crucial wickets in his ninth. Good performance from the 19-year-old. Picking up his first ODI wickets for the UAE in just his second game. Two for 39 from 10. He'll be very pleased with that. And so will his captain, Ahmed Raza. To Rice to Silver. Looks like he's taken the ball. To bowl this 38th over. 13 to go. Scotland 176 for four. First ball driven very firmly from Callum McLeod for four through extra cover. Drives to Silva welcomed back into this attack with a crunching drive. And Callum McLeod just frees his hands and beats Ahmed Raza at mid off just inside the circle. And we can hear the rain falling on the umbrellas above us. It's not heavy enough yet for the umpires to take us off. It's quite remarkable after these two are washed out in Sharjah to think that we've got rain again. This time in Dubai. Hopefully we can get through to the interval without any disturbance.
as De Silva beating the outside edge of Dylan Budge's bat. He's come back well after being hit for four first ball. Just the one run from subsequent four deliveries. One to go then of this 38th over of Scotland's innings. one to finish the over. Scotland move on to 182 for four from 38. Worth bearing in mind they were 138 without loss at one stage before Matthew Cross departed has 42 runs since then there's four wickets that have fallen and the UAE will be delighted to have hauled themselves back into the game after that incredible opening partnership between Scotland captain Carl Kurtzer and Matthew Cross worth 138 12 overs remaining 72 deliveries Roma Stapper come back into the attack in place of Kartik Mayapan. He's finished up his 10 overs. chance missed down the leg side of Richard Aravind 17 year old wicket keeper and you see Roma Stafford's frustration there caught the fingertips of Aravind Cloud gets away with one. Not someone you want to give too many chances to, if any. Worth noting, 16 then has dropped on. Will that prove costly for the UAE? The staffer's reaction told you everything you need to know about the importance of McLeod's wicket. Bold, Roma Staffa takes the fifth wicket for the UAE. And it's not proven too costly, that drop earlier in the over. McLeod driving away from his body. And it just straightened. With the arm, and Roma Staffa has a big wicket. Scotland 185 for five after 39 overs. Callum McLeod gone for 17. It's been in such good form over the last two games. A big, big wicket for the UAE. Brings Michael Jones to the crease. Originally down to bat three. He's now come in at seven. Scotland changing that batting order up after the excellent start made by Kurtzer and 
cross. A big wicket from Roe Mustafa. Callum McLeod. Edge went down the leg side and was dropped earlier in that over by Richard Aravind, the keeper. Lost only one extra run. At the expense of McLeod's bat. Big wicket for Roe Mustafa. One for 23 from six overs now. He's been excellent with the ball. 11 overs to go, 66 deliveries left. In Scotland's innings, 185 for five. They were 138 without loss. It's been excellent response from the UAE. Still and Budge on strike who picks up that single. Darius to Silva is the bowler into his final over of his 10. Good start from De Silva. It's that one single from the first ball. Michael Jones yet to get off mark, off off the mark. First two deliveries. in the air but it lands safely and Jones is off the mark Michael Jones made 52 in the first game against the USA back in Sharjah at the start of this series they made 24 yesterday as well, again against the US as Scotland went on to victory. Time falls just short of Jonathan Figgy. He does well to keep his balance and complete the fielding. Ten overs to go. Scotland, 188 for five. Darius De Silva finishing up his ten overs for 51. Excellent tenth there. Went for just three. Ten overs to go. And you have done excellently to pull this back.
for uh, Mustafa that continues in his seventh over. Figgy again, he's been so alive in there today. Very quick to the ball. So it continues to drizzle here, the light's on. It's been a gloomy morning. Some odd weather conditions here in Dubai. A very well run too from the Scotland batsman to end the 41st over, 192 for five, nine overs to go. Roma Stafford goes for just four from that over, one for 27 from his seven. Peter Delapena joins us once again. Now, if this was a test cricket match or a match between full members, I feel like they would have come off the field by now. They're very, very sensitive to stopping play. This kind of rain we experienced in Trinidad during the Super 50 tour, and boom, they were off. Covers on, no hesitation. It seems to have gotten slightly heavier just in the space of that overchange. You're right, it's so wary that once they come off, it's then more difficult to get back on. Now, this is a traditional Scottish thickness rain. At the Grange, you'd play through this all summer long. Scotland very accustomed to this, not bothered in the least. Where they have been bothered, though, is that young leggy Kartik Mayapan, the double strike. And then Ahmed Razan, now Rohan Mustafa, Drawing them back from 138 for no loss to 192 for five now. Fantastic fight back by the UAE. Absolutely. This is getting heavier here, the rain. And yeah, Peter, when you left commentary earlier on after 15 overs, Scotland were well ahead and they carried on their merry way. It looked very good. And then all of a sudden, an excellent performance from UAE to get haul themselves back into this. The tied for the 11th highest partnership in one-day cricket all time for Scotland. That 138 run stand between Matthew Cross and Kyle Kutzer. Well short of the highest partnership and highest opening partnership. There was a 200 run opening stand between Gavin Hamilton and Fraser Watts. Some legends of Scottish cricket yore. You can see Scotland players taking their kit in from the boundary edge, a sign of how much heavier this rain's got now. Well, on the forecast early in the week, it said it wasn't going to get this heavy until 3 o'clock. So the cloud seeding was ahead of schedule, Barney. And with that, the players 
are being called off of the pitch. The ground staff coming on with those covers. Scotland 193 for five after 42 overs as rain brings hopefully a just a brief stop to play. Eight overs remaining of this Scotland innings. It's been a fine comeback from the UAE. You see that scorecard. Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtzer were just absolutely excellent at the start. Putting on 138 for that opening partnership. Matthew Cross, 53. Kurtzer would go on to make 95. One of those wickets that's fallen. Guy. Kartik Mayapan took two in the same over. Richie Berrington and Carl Kurtzer, two massive wickets to take. It's helped change the complex of this game. It's pulled UAE right back into it. See those bowling figures there. Karthik may open the pick. Two for 39 from his 10. He's been superb. Still four in the bank for Junaid Siddiqui. Three for Roma Staffer and one for Ahmed Raza. That will make up the remaining eight overs of this Scotland innings. Should we manage to squeeze them in? With rain just taking us off for the time being. Scotland 193 for five.
Can we uh, back out after that brief rain break? Scotland, 193 for five. Eight overs remaining. And it started to get heavy, but almost as, as soon as the players went off the pitch, it's eased off. And it's Junaid Siddiqui into the attack. As Peter Della Pena mentions, 15 minute delay there for the rain. He's still falling lightly. They scattered those seeds around in the clouds, Barney. Just drop them in one big pile. They saved the big pile of the cloud seed for Sharjah. They do a much better job sh scattering and shifting those seeds around in Dubai. been quite the remarkable turnaround if you're just joining us Scotland 138 without loss at one stage then the fall of Matthew Cross sparked a comeback from the UAE 56 runs and five wickets falling since then Now that decision to play that extra batsman for UAE doesn't look so bad. They can restrict them to 250. Having that a little bit of extra depth gives them a really good chance of chasing this down if the weather holds off. Deke goes short. It's quick and good carry through to Pritchard Avravind. Paul Radley, the national, mentioning earlier that the UAE haven't tested the middle of the wicket out too often. Unlike a team like the USA, who, through Cameron Stevenson and Rusty Tehran, really hit the centre of the track. <laughs> and at times they got a bit carried away doing that. Yeah, and that loss to Scotland yesterday, they probably did it to their detriment at the towards the death. On that note, Peter, USA finished their campaign for this tri-series yesterday. Three wins and that one loss from it. How do you rate how they've they fared here? Complete debacle, sack the coach, sack the entire team, get rid of them all. They need a USA-style Argus review. How could they not sweep the series? No, it was really a fantastic tour for USA. Three wins out of four. Fantastic pace bowling performances mentioned before. Sarb Netravalker, 10 wickets. USA's first ever ODI five for from the captain. Very nearly had USC's first ever ODI century. Aaron Jones and Monong Patel looked like they were in with a really good chance on a couple of occasions in Sharjah. 
And Aaron Jones was one shot away. And it looked like that shot was going to clear the boundary. And it was Wahid Ahmed with an incredible one-handed catch at deep square leg to deny that three-figure milestone for Aaron Jones. But considering the fact that, again, there was a bit of uncertainty for USA coming into this lead two competition, going back to Florida, good running here for a tight single, without Ali Khan, without Hayden Walsh Jr., who were two very, very intricate members of USA's march to ODI status through Division Three in Oman and Division Two in Namibia. And the fact that they haven't experienced a drop-off in the overall standard in the wind column in particular has been a credit to the work done by James Pammon as the interim head coach. And Saurav Nechavalkar is captain and some of the other senior players I like Aaron Jones, who has had three 50s now in the first two tri series that have been played for USA. I think if they had Ali Khan and Hayden Walsh Jr. in the lineup, everybody would have expected them to go six and two. No questions asked, but without them to still go six and two in their first eight matches is quite an impressive feat. Yeah, I thought the US were excellent throughout. Scotland bring up the two hundred, two hundred five at the end of that forty fifth, forty fourth over, sorry. Six overs to go. This first inning, Scotland having been put into bat by UE Captain Ahmed Raza. At the start of play today. And currently they'll be disappointed they haven't built more on this that opening stand that was so good. Between Carl Kurtzer and Matthew Cross. Worth 138. And UE have done a fantastic job to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, I thought the US were highly impressive during this series. The only disappointment will be that yesterday they couldn't quite bowl to or execute their plans at the death as Scotland secured a four-wicket win. I imagine they must have cut frustrated figures at the end of yesterday. You speak to some of the members of that US side, Peter. Well, I know they had quite a lengthy team meeting afterwards, the kind of team meeting you would expect to have after a catastrophic defeat. Short from Siddiqui, Budge pulls it beautifully over mid-wicket. There's a huge boundary out there. It runs away for four, though. Budge leaping off his feet and pulling into the leg side. Excellent shot. And a much-needed boundary for Scotland. Budge moves on to 19 from 32. Stunning pull shot from Dylan Budge. And then just runs it down to third man for a single. Can we even call that a pull shot? <laughs> Very incredible footwork and the wrist speed, the forearm speed. It wasn't a full-blooded wind up with the back lift and pull. It was more of a short arm jab 
had produced incredible speed off the bat through his wrist action and that forearm action. Incredible timing there by Budge. And this time drives beautifully through cover. Michael Jones. It's full and wide outside off stump. Michael Jones punishes Junaid Siddiqui through cover. Beats Figgy and it's Mohamed Usman doing the fielding on the boundary in front of us. Had no chance. Two glorious shots. Contrasting ones, but glorious nonetheless. Good value for money today from the Scotland batsman. Especially when it's free admission at the ICC Academy. Michael Jones trying to one up Dylan Budge with that shot. Very, very elegant. Mixing that timing with the power. And Sadiqi's been excellent throughout this series for UAE. But he's missed his mark a bit today. And you see there, overcompensating. The short ball was punished in some fashion by Dylan Budge. And the over pitches and Michael Jones down on one knee a few better sights than that on one knee and driving through cover do we call that the marriage proposal cover drive Barney yeah, I think so Peter that's better from Siddiqui to win that 45th over. A very good one for Scotland. Nine runs from it. 209 for five. 30 balls remaining in this. Roma Staffa will bowl the 46th. Big final five overs here. Game still very much in the balance in this innings. feel like wherever Scotland get to from here, thinking of what could have been after being 138 without loss, still five overs to go. It's a paddle sweep to short fine leg, and Janae Tadiki lets it through his legs. It's just one row, Mustafa is furious. I'm calling that the possum misfield. He was trying to tease Dylan Budge into coming back for a second to trigger a run out chance. It was always going to be a single there. I think Grohan must have got high expectations if he thought that was going to be cut off to deny a run. At this stage of the match, in the final five overs, you run on contact, playing it to short fine leg. It did bring about a change in the field. The staffer was was furious. Sneaky comes round to backward square on the boundary. Ahmed Raza goes in at short fine leg and Jonathan Figgy just moves round to mid wicket inside the circle. Jonathan Figgy, the 18 year old making his debut. He'll be thinking about the bat. Slated to come down at three for the UAE. It's clever here from Dylan Budge because he knows Rohan Mustafa is Darting it in as fast as he possibly can. So he's just using the pace on the ball with these little paddle shots, paddle sweeps, tickles. All he needs to do is just connect. And if he can get it three or four yards to the right or left of the man at short fine leg, it's an automatic boundary. And because of that, you can see Rohan must have slowed up the pace on that one, just flighted it a bit more, denying that ability for Budge to utilize the pace on these quick off-spinning darts from the ex-captain.
Oh, it's excellent work from Roa Mustafa. So alert through his follow through, flicks the ball onto his onto the stumps at the non-striker's end. How unfortunate. How brilliant. The snowman, double 88, gets his fingertips on it. And yeah, no hesitation from Asan Raz of the Empire at that end. With Budge. Again in a mode in the last five overs where you're basically running on contact. You would expect him to be a bit deeper in the crease, protecting against the flick on. It was at an earlier stage of the match, but exposed at the non-strikers in there. And Rohan Mustafa off celebrating again. Yeah, Rohan Mustafa, the amount of times just makes things happen. In the field, Scotland 214 for six. Joshua Davy, the new man in, who was brilliant yesterday of the bat, seeing his side over the line against the USA. Excellent work from Roe Mustafa. Just got a fingertip on it, steer it onto the stumps. And what a take that is from Richard Aravins behind the, behind the stumps for the UAE. That was fired in from Roe Mustafa. Excellent work from Aravind. Just 17 years of age. And bold. They say Roe Mustafa just makes things happen. Follows up that wide with the wicket of Michael Jones. And Scotland 215 for seven. Michael Jones. Furious with himself. Roma Mustafa darting it in again. So quick. Jones looking to play off the back foot. Bowled through the gate. And Roma Mustafa has his second wicket as well as that run out. Jones goes for 12 off of 21. Mark Watt, the new man. With the crease, four overs to go. Scotland 215 for seven. This has been exceptional from the UAE, hasn't it, Peter? The double snowman, 88 with a double strike in the 46th, the flick on, and then one legal ball later, rattles the stumps. What a man he is. And all of a sudden, UAE said 250 a couple overs ago, they could get him under 230 at this rate. If they keep plugging away, Janine Siddiqui's got a job to do to ensure that he holds up his end of the bargain. And he starts well, the dot. Joshua Davey on strike. I said, Mark Watt, the new man at the non-striker's end. Siddiqui into his ninth over. One for 48 so far. Big appeal and given, and Siddiqui has another 215 for eight. Joshua Davy goes, second ball. As you see the replay here. Oh. Siddiqui wrapping Davy on that knee roll of his front pad. Touch and go on height there, Barney. He's definitely hit in front of the stumps. He was hit above the knee roll, but he went back deep in his crease. Mm. See those giving not out sometimes. But in the modern era of DRS, you see the technology indicate also at times that that would be a, a bail clipper, potentially. And Siddiqui with a convincing enough appeal for that to be given. 
and all those 50-50 opportunities today are going the UAE's way. The flick onto the stumps. That LBW decision. Things have gone absolutely haywire since Matthew Cross played that reverse sweep. Yeah, absolutely. Seems a long time ago that Scotland were 138 without loss. 215 for eight now. That's very much touch and go when you look at it on replay, as Peter says. Bale clip is a very good description of it. An umpire's call. Dougie Brown and the coach of the UAE side and Ahmed Raza, his captain, will be delighted with how his side have clawed the way back into this game. Three and a half overs to go. The complexion has changed dramatically. Siddiqui, four dot balls in a row. The start of this 47th over. Yeah, amongst all that excitement is Stuart Whittingham. The next man in at 10. First sight of him during this tri-series. Took a bag full of wickets against the USA in a warm-up match in Sharjah. Uh, hasn't been in the starting 11 for the live matches, the ODIs. Be curious to see what he does in the field today. Excellent from Siddiqui here. Can he join the dots up? For Whittingham, it's an opportunity to showcase more of Scotland's pace bowling depth. Sharif out, injured. In case you missed it earlier, Barney Saying he pulled the Glenn McGraw, injured himself playing warm up. Driven. Although it's probably news to Glenn McGraw that he was playing football when he got injured in 2005. <laughs> Would make for a much better story if he was playing football. If you're an Australia fan anyway. If I'm an England fan, I think it's much more comical the way that he Stepped on a stray cricket ball. And Scotland, 216 for eight. Excellent over from Junaid Siddiqui. Went for just one and picking up a wicket in that over as well. Free to go. Roma Staffa to bowl the 48th. Yeah, as Peter mentions there, told earlier on by George, Scotland's scorer, that Sharif had picked up a dead leg playing football. actually feeling it yesterday. Now that's the official count. What wasn't shown on camera was a vicious slide tackle by one of his teammates. Yeah, well it wouldn't wouldn't be George himself. <laughs> torn a, an ACL playing five aside football earlier on earlier on the tour. He's telling me earlier he's got a near immediate visit to the GP when he gets back. And they'll probably say, you made it this long without needing surgery. You can keep going. Well, use his feet very nicely. There's a fielder out there. Just be one. Excellent use of the feet, though, from Mark Watt. Very fascinating tactics throughout this inning. You could see it telegraphed earlier when they bowled out Darius De Silva that they were going to use Ron Mustafa at the death here. Not entirely unusual 
for UAE, but still the fact that they have confidence in a spinner to bowl at the death and bowl so effectively at the death is testament to the skill that Alan Mustafa has. Didn't feel the need to hold back both of their medium pacers for death overs. Did it quite well against USA. Here again doing it against Scotland. Yeah, as Smith Patel from Crick Buzz told us on commentary, as noted a couple of days ago, those darting Yorkers that Mustafa bowls, just like that one, he acts almost as a seamer. And as Peter mentions, it's not an unfamiliar role for Rowan. And a big appeal and out. Those Yorkers that we're talking about, seen in full effect there. And the ninth Scottish wicket falls. Roa Mustafa picks up his third. And what a performance it's been with him. From him at the death here. So you see, darting it into Whittingham. I think... If that one wasn't given out, Earl Hahn would have been with his back on the turf doing a snow angel, <laughs> continuing to plead because it doesn't get more out than that. Hit full on the toe right in front of middle stump. Would have taken out middle and leg. Yeah, and what a performance this has been from the UAE. Scotland now 219 for nine. Two overs to go. Roa Mustafa, three for 34 from his nine overs. He'll bowl the 50th should we need it. Janae Siddiqui will bowl the penultimate over of this Scotland innings. Mark Watt, the man on strike. Hamza to hear the new man at the non-striker's end. Siddiqui has two for 49 from 9.1 so far. Pulled into the leg side, it'll be one. Some excited <laughs> shouts <laughs> from UAE fielders. Wanting Figgy, the debutante, to go to the bowler's end. Well, then his rights just to have collected it and thrown it back to the bowler there. A very excited fielders. See that batting scorecard. Cross and Kurtzer were so good at the top. Wrapped in front, and the umpire nods and raises his finger. And Scotland are all out for 220 from 138 without loss. They've ended up bowled out inside the 50 overs with nine balls remaining. And Siddiqui has his third wicket. Wraps to Tahir right in front of middle stump. As plumb as you get. Scotland 220 all out. Stunning performance from the UAE to come back after Matthew Cross and Carl Kurtz that was so good in that 138 run opening partnership. Cross went for 53, Kurtz a later 95. And you see there was a slide then. Ah, Dylan Budge making 23. Everyone else would be very disappointed, the Scots to be in such a position of power earlier on. 
have a look at the UAE bowling figures. Karthik Mayapan, here's two wickets, so important. Two for 39 from 10. Roma Mustafa and Junaid Siddiqui, great at the depth there. Roma Mustafa, three for 34. Junaid Siddiqui, three for 50. And Ahmed Raza picking up the other, one for 43. Roma Mustafa also affecting a run out. Well, Peter, quite a remarkable comeback from the UAE. Scotland will be very disappointed, won't they? A lesson from the Greek gods and hubris in that innings. Overreaching, sending George Muncy up to number three. And it backfired spectacularly for the Scots. As that plan didn't come off, and then the rest of the batting order, McLeod, Barrington, and Michael Jones being shifted down the order didn't come off. And... Even how the partnership itself was broken. Playing that reverse sweep, they were doing such a fine job. Just milking singles, rotating the strike, running the ball to third man, playing it square. It didn't seem like there was a desperate need to play that kind of shot. They could have kept on going for another five or ten overs longer. But that cross, reverse sweep, trigger the collapse. And the cover is being rushed back on here as the players have left the field. And... Perhaps Scotland might not mind that, considering how their innings went downhill in the fashion that it did. Yeah, quite possibly. And then at the innings break then, UE will come back, requiring 221 for victory. This final match of six in the Tri-Series forms the ICC Cricket World Cup League 2. We'll be back shortly for that resumption and UE's pursuit of 221 for victory.
Welcome back to ICC Academy here in Dubai. After a quick interval. Ready for the resumption. Scotland finished up 220 all out. They're 138 without loss. And then the UAE was superb to come back and restrict them to a total that the UAE with such a deep batting lineup today will fancy chasing. Jirag Suri and Vritcher. Aravin, the two men to open the batting for the UAE. Paul Radley from the Nationals here to join me for this run chase. 221 for, for the win. Afternoon, Paul. Afternoon, Barney. It's nice to see then, as you just mentioned, you're very young, young and in inexperienced UAE team for this game. Under 19s actually training on the adjacent field just behind us here Arian Lacra the captain of the UAE under 19 side walked across from from where he was he's, he's still here actually applauding trying to catch his uh, under 19 colleague Ritya Aravin's attention giving him a boost on the way out shouting across to him good luck really nice to see So that under-19s team are training for the World Cup next month. It's Joshua Davey who opens the bowling for Scotland. He wrote about Alistair Evans and Zafian Sharif today. It's Cherag Suri who takes the first ball beyond strike. Aravind at the non striker's end that Paul's mentioning just then. Slated at number three is Jonathan Figgy, making his debut. Another young lad will be going to South Africa, just 18 years of age. That'll bring Aravind on to strike. He scored 16 on debut against the USA and then 23 off of 18 balls against the US again it's a bright and breezy 23 wasn't it? it was two a big sixes innings. in this in this region weren't they Barney better keep our eyes peeled he was also hit on the in that innings hit on the helmet by Rusty Theron as we mentioned before uh, Bowling a lot of short balls at this ground. Josh Davy, the Scotland bowler, actually pinned a USA player as well himself yesterday. Stephen Taylor, from memory, Barney, was it? Yep. It was indeed. Excuse me as I finish your chips. Force down some chips. done a solid today haven't you run into the golden arches for lunch other fast food outlets are available and it was because you had a peak upstairs didn't you oh. saw the players were offered very very envious as to the what the players were having for lunch today beef massaman curry looked delicious You went for the less healthy option, didn't you, Barney? Yeah, turn turned down the brown bags. Rice and chicken. Didn't see the veg option. It's a lovely drive from Aravind. Half stopped in the circle. 
It was over pitch. He just leant on it. It was a lovely drive. Caressed through cover. So four without loss after that first over. Stuart Whittingham we'll see for the first time in this series. Take the other new ball. It's a lovely shot that, wasn't it, Paul, from Richard Aravind? Yep. <laughs> Noticeable in that first over how straight the the UAE batsmen were trying to play. Obviously, very small sample size. But something that <coughs> Dougie Brown was a little bit critical of. <coughs> excuse me, of them in the game against the United States here, where they were five down quite quickly. High bouncer, wide ball. Yeah, he was concerned that they. Had Playing a little bit too square of the wicket <coughs> for them to see the full face of the bat coming down, playing the bowler's back as straight as possible. What was the UAE reaction like to that? As they were obliterated at the top of the order. Lovely oh shot lovely through shot. point. Lent into it, freed the hands and timed it beautifully. Runs away for four. Such an impressive stroke. 17 year old looks so good. Lovely little flourish as well. Yeah, this will be the response, I suppose. Talk about it as much as you like, and I think they do do a bit of talking and planning. It doesn't really count for much until you get out there. They've got to prove themselves here. Good response that from Whittingham. Beats Aravind outside off stump. You've been impressed with Aravind in these quite brief innings so far, but... Yeah, it's definitely, l I mean, it's so lucky really and nerveless to be a 17 year old kid and be getting hit in the face by Rusty Theron hitting him smacking him miles for six of the next ball 17 year old thrown into the breach opening the batting against bowlers of that standard on his ODI, his debut ODI series doesn't seem to be showing any nerves whatsoever doesn't actually open for the un under 19s but he um, says he's confident doing so he likes the pace during the power play overs would it be Jonathan Figgy potentially opening in South Africa for the under 19s just trying to think who they've got a lot of bat batsmen actually. Anch Tanders not would have been close to selection for this senior team, I'd have thought. He's in that too. Uh, Arian Lacra, the captain, has opened. Lots of options. I don't think necessarily. It's another lovely shot from a young man. Four runs behind square. That bouncer. Yeah, he's not short of confidence, is he? Might have taken his eye off it at the last minute. That's the, the shot that got him out a couple of days ago, wasn't it? 
was a chip that one up to mid on when he was playing against the United States similar sort of shot Too short again from Whittingham. But that shot from Aravind, it obviously got enough of it. It went away for four, but he wasn't in full control of the shot. No. But I think he'll be happy enough to get that away, and he's made a very bright start again. Not even the second over completed. He's already on 11. Feel like he missed out there. Tough start for Whittingham. Taking a while to settle. A couple of wides. And a full toss there on the last ball. Yeah, so UAE, good start. Courtesy of Richard Aravind in particular. Team without loss from 11. Aravind himself, 11 off nine balls. Could be Chirag Suri on strike. Using his feet, trying to come down the track to Davy. Suri's been around the side for a long time, in and out of things, but more settled in recent times but do you think he needs a big score I well <coughs> he'd obviously like it um, I don't think his place is in any way in jeopardy no if that's what you're asking you have got very high expectations for the future on Chirag potential future captain I'd have thought tends to play innings he's played a lot of innings in his short career so far that have been pretty valuable for the UAE like he, I think like you were alluding to just then he probably hasn't scored the weight of runs consistently but he has scored runs in pressure situations he played a very valuable important knock against the Netherlands in Zimbabwe in Harare last year at the 50 over World Cup qualifier <coughs> that saw saw the UAE to an important win that guaranteed their ODI status. It's a lovely technique. Chirag, he always looks great at the crease. He's uh, just not quite hit huge runs of consistent form. Is that fair to say? I think fair to say, yeah. But he's very easy on the eye. As you said, very highly regarded in the UE set. And a lovely lad as well. Popular within the, within the UE set up, yeah with the other players. Always unrelentingly positive, which is admirable. Third over, a good one from Scotland. Just that 
one wide off it from Joshua Davey. 15, o 15 runs without loss to the UAE in pursuit of 221. Three overs gone. Big Mac dispatched. <laughs> Ready and raring to go now. Fully energised now, are you, Barney? I'm sure I'll slump about 15 <laughs> overs in. <laughs> Tea gone as well. You uh, not too long ago gave up tea, Paul, to my dismay. Yeah, you have to get your own now, don't you? Edge and it falls short of first slip and runs away for four. Richard Aravind driving outside the off stump. And just falls short. The man in at slip. A little bit of movement there, away from the batsman. Encouraging for Scotland. A huge full toss. And a no ball. And we see that again. From Whittingham. It's a beamer in the end. Shrag Suri on strike. There's a big full toss down the leg side. Whittingham really bowling a bag of all sorts at the minute. Means it's still a free hit. There are a couple of balls he'll want to forget and put back in his locker, won't he? Yeah, he struggled to settle. He's struggling to shake off the rust. He says it's the first game of the series for him. It's full toss again. He's got a hand on it at a point, but it's flown through and still gone for four. It's a big hand as well. It's how hard Suri's hit it. Again, very poor from Whittingham. Full toss, outside off stump. Allows Surrey to just free his arms. It's Michael Jones that was at point. It was a free hit, so had he taken it, it would have meant very little. Got a big hand on it, but still went for four. And well... Whitting will be encouraged that he pitched that one. Still loose on the legs. Now he needs to settle down here. Fourteen from the over so far, just three legal deliveries gone. The UAE just being allowed to settle in. <coughs> yeah, probably a bit more dramatically than than it was earlier on. But UAE also slightly loose, perhaps not this loose, slightly loose, and gave Scotland a start as well. I wonder if UAE can make as much of their start they've been given as the two Scotland openers did.
the last ball of the fourth over. Again on the legs. Tucked away very nicely by Cherik Suri. Looking for free. And he comes back for free. Great running from the UE batsman. It's Mark Watt that was doing the fielding, going from mid on round to mid wicket. Very well run free. Captain Barney Kurtz, so what would you do? Would you make a change at this end? After that tough start Whittingham's had? Oh yeah, he's gone for 26 from his first two overs. He did manage to settle into a couple of Yorkers towards the end of that over, but yeah, I think he might be looking to change. Dylan Budge, bowl a bit of seam. Richie Barrington if needed. Got the spinners as well. Hamza to here, Mark Watt. Whoa, what a shot! Jerek <laughs> Suri. Extraordinary shot. Fantastic from Chirag Suri. See, Joshua Davies, the bowler, continuing. Suri uses his feet. Davies sees him coming, tries to drop it down, and Suri just pulls it over mid wicket. Remarkable shot. Excellent start from the UAE. This time pulled behind square firmly again, and it goes for four. Michael Jones diving in front of us here. It went, he didn't have a huge amount of ground to cover, but it went so quickly that he did very well to get that close to it. Jack Suri's mullered that one as well. Past couple of deliveries. Straight out of the middle of that bat. That noise it made off the bat, crunching. Sound off the bat of Chirag Suri. Moves on to 20 now. Very impressive from the UAE. This new opening partnership very much in its infancy. Excellent start here though. replies from Davey but UE taking 10 off those first two balls of the over they don't have to do too much else nothing remarkable if they don't need to or don't have to Must have been an exciting start to this innings. Chirag Suri's already asking for a new pair of gloves and a drink. <laughs> Five overs in. Just runs that down to third man. Suri will keep the strike. 42 without loss after five overs. Good at counting to six as well. And there's a helmet being brought on for Matthew Cross, the wicketkeeper. Would suggest we're going to have some spin. Yeah, Mark Watt taking his hat off. His hand to the umpire. Smart move this, I think, by Scotland. Mark Watt bowled exceptionally well yesterday against the United States from this end. Yeah, taken seven wickets from two games against the USA. Such a key figure in the Scotland bowling attack. Two UAE openers look very well set against the 
pace coming on to the ball. It's been taken out of it now with what into the attack. It'll be what to uh, Suri. He's 21 from 20 balls. Arvin the other end, 16 off 11. Sounded like Dougie Brown appreciating that single down. Sensible cricket. Yeah. Bit of pragmatism after that bright start they've had. Big appeal for leg before. See that again. Fritcher Aravind, 17 year old, is on strike. Suggest it's going down the leg side. Man's coming at cover now. See, just there, Richie Barrington catching on the drive. We noticed from that replay. Something that we commented on, Paul, is Mark what how wide he bowls the ball from. His front foot going. It doesn't even cut the return crease, does it? It goes slightly the other side of it. As a result, the angle the ball comes down from. It's got often often could be heading down the leg side, as it was just on that previous appeal. Whoops. <laughs> we had a lot of this yesterday. What, getting frustrated with the batsman not being ready? <coughs> Didn't notice that he wasn't there, actually. Well, this is fun and games. What's going on here? It seems like what's the man that's pulling up? Mm. Now... Complaining to the umpire. Yesterday, Mark Watt was very frustrated by USA batsman pulling out as he got to the crease. I think the UAE will be delighted to have gotten into the Scottish heads so far this early on. Just judging by the past couple of days, I don't think it takes much <laughs> Mark Watt to get frustrated. But to be fair, if he needs that, and he can offer the returns that he has done, or well particularly that he did do yesterday, then more power to him. Be one to watch out for. Chirag Suri was the batsman on those two occasions just then. Watch that battle closely. Good over though from what went for just three. Bringing a bit of control back after Stuart Whittingham, Whittingham's two overs went for 26. Big appeal. for leg before wicket. Davey looks very frustrated. Suri using his feet to shuffle down the track. It's a long way down in the end. Suggest that was going down the leg side at Difficult least. Difficult to give that, he'd have thought. It take much of a deflection and went down the leg side. It's very animated though. Joshua Davey, the was in the minority roller. though.
Aravin did well to check the shot a little there. He's driving on the up. That's Dylan Budge, who's at cover. Had he just followed through a fraction more, might well have just picked him out. Good control from Aravin, though. Under 19's teammates drifting across, supporting. Yep. Relaying the score back. <laughs> Some nonplussed looks with the speed that Turag's going. <laughs> Again, nice to see though, isn't it? Paul, we were mentioning earlier about the lack of UAE fans at games. We now have quite a strong group of youngsters coming over to see how the seniors are going on. Hopefully get some inspiration. It makes such a difference for the players involved. Also gives these, these young lads the belief that they can do it. They're not far off. Seeing one of their teammates out there. 17 not out in a one-day international against Scotland. Yeah, we've spoken about pathways and opportunities. And this for this young group of players. The under 19s about to go off to the World Cup in South Africa. Great for them to come over and see some teammates in action for the full senior side in an ODI. That's what we want to see, isn't it? Mark Watt will continue. That's excellent over from Davey. Went for just one. Scotland putting the brakes on a little bit now. But the UAE won't be disappointed at all. Thanks to that excellent start earlier on. 46 without loss from seven. Three overs left of this 10 over power play. Just two men available to be out. Eight. Might get a warning about this in a minute because oh, straight back into it there. The umpires had a glance at each other after that. This is a third time now. Again, Suri's the man on strike. Couple of words were there, there exchanged. Another fine over from Mark Watts so far. Just gone for one from the first five balls. Excellent over. UE 47 without loss from eight. 
Aravin's been stuck on 17 a little bit now. So young lad, he'll just have to make sure he doesn't get frustrated. Yeah, absolutely. That's his test. Obviously, seems like a player he does like to get the scoreboard ticking over. Just need to bear in mind that they've had a good start. The score that they're chasing isn't a massive one. So if he does chew up a couple of dot balls here and there, not to worry. The hammers that are here we have slow left arm from both ends. To here will come into the attack. Sorry, cuts backward of point. Draws a round of applause from the UAE under 19 team sitting here and watching on. Runs away for four. UAE bring up their 50. The start of the ninth over. <laughs> yeah, drew big applause that, didn't it? UAE youngsters watching on. Supporting Chirag. You imagine Chirag Suri would be someone as well that will have given back to the under 19s already, be someone that will help them out, be yeah, someone that definitely. they can lean on. Noticeable that the uh, the young lads that are in the UA senior team, th those who still qualify for the under 19 side, were knocking about with Chirag yesterday at training. probably do regard him as an inspiration as well like you were saying before he's come through the same situation then played under 19s cricket played at uh, under 19s world cup UAE. now f more or less a mainstay of the senior team is it a good role model for them you'd have thought he has that glamorous ipl stint as absolutely. well absolutely i'm sure they're all aware of that something that they've Perhaps like to emulate even more than following him in into the senior team. Yeah, it was interesting to see that yesterday, and they, the young lads hung around with Chirag as well once yep. everyone else had gone back to the team hotel. Sent Ahmed Raza a text saying, oh, Ahmed, are you still around? Can you come on comms? Nope, already gone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the young lads were still knocking around. Yeah, they were. They stayed and watched. Got some <laughs> intel on the opposition they were facing today. Good to see. <laughs> Probably have got a bit more wrist into that shot. <laughs> Very flashy. Well, we did see that those sixes that yep. we spoke of. We took took Rusty to run on. Very wristy flicks off of his legs. Must very much be a part of his game. Looks that way. He seems Just to have all the shots. Really, it's like a powerful area for him uh, in, in this part. So I just keep pointing out that we're, uh, as you look at the screen there, deep backward square, or oh, sorry, which end are we on now? So sorry, should be deep extra cover actually, as it is now. It's our position. That's this is the region that Britty hit his two massive sixes in the previous match against the United States. Surrey rocks back and launches Mark Watt over mid on. Has a couple of words. <laughs> Surrey <laughs> pointing to where the ball had just gone as evidence of <laughs> his own counter. He picked on the length very quickly. Surrey going over mid on. This is a great contest between these two. And Surrey this time goes again to the same region. And he gets even more of it. Couple of bounces and goes away for four. <laughs> Mark Watt noticeably quiet after that one. 
Surrey, excellent from him. And even more with the approval of the under-19s. Absolutely loving it. They liked those two shots, didn't they? <laughs> And good again from Surrey. He's taken those two early boundaries. He now doesn't have to do anything stupid. Even now at the end of this over, they'd be going at six. 60 of out loss, halfway through the 10th. Mark, what, what's your response? Man at mid on coming in from the boundary now for the final ball of this 10th over. Will Surrey try and go over him again? Oh, he looks to. But instead, gets the inside half of the bat, gets two. Brave shot that. It seems like it's slightly premeditated and it was a quicker ball by what? Work though. It's 10 runs from the over. Chat between them. See what? No, <laughs> ignoring each <laughs> other. <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> Very interesting to watch those two come together. Great battle. The end of the 10th over then. 62 about loss. A UAE. What a stunning start this has been. Jag Surrey, 40 from 35. Aravind, he's been on 17 now for I think it's nine balls. But as long as he gets himself in. You he won't be too concerned. They're going at a very good rate. And the required run rate has already come down to four. Or a nudge below. They'll be all too aware though of what happened in the Scotland innings after an excellent start. 138 without loss. Then slipping to 220 all out. Even more aware of their own form, I'd have thought that's what would be uppermost in their minds. Young side, rebuilding. And sweeping down the leg side is caught. He looks nonplussed. The umpire nodded and raised his finger. Aravind looking at his batting partner as if to suggest. Can he review it? <laughs> to, to hear the bowler. And just caught down the leg side. Matthew Cross was very confident behind the stumps. Aravind goes, 17 off of 30 balls. UE lose their, lose their first wicket. Fourth ball of the 11th over. <laughs> Jonathan Figgy, the new man to the crease. Could not be any more eager to get to the crease, I don't think. He, <laughs> so he, nearly, tripped so <laughs> <laughs> he nearly tripped over. On his way out. It's an entrance. That would have been on ODI debut. Good footwork. Not in that instance. Nearly betrayed him. <laughs> As he ran out to the crease. God, he's very eager, wasn't he? And this will be very interesting to see how Jonathan Figgy goes. As we mentioned earlier on, it's the first name we shouted at each other this morning. Paul, when we saw each other, very excited to see Jonathan Figgy in action. Crucial stage of the game as well, this, I feel. UAE have had a very bright start. 
they feel disappointed, I think. That wicket was given. Young young player on debut. I think he's a he's a slight lad, very isn't he? Diminutive figure. Bats with his feet very close together in his stance. But he's off the mark. Off the mark in international cricket, good on him. For those well, everyone seeing Jonathan Figgy for the first time. He was a bit of a bio of the 18-year-old making his UAE debut. <laughs> yes, so he's um, from an Indian family, Abu Dhabi born and raised. Um, son of a Christian preacher, I think, at a church in uh, Abu Dhabi. Kind of a bit in-depth here. <laughs> Schoolboy prodigy scored um, stacks of runs in schoolboy cricket in the UAE, which earned him a scholarship to Winchester School in the UK. He scored a hundred against Winchester School when they were touring here. Immediately offered him a scholarship to attend school there for his A levels and play cricket. I think he broke, as far as I'm aware, broke the school run scoring record in the first team in both the years both of his senior years I'd have to check that I think that's the case and he's on to university now also in the UK back here for his much anticipated it must be said debut for the UAE and he'll face Richie Barrington coming into the attack for the first time Interesting, they did this yesterday, didn't they, Scotland? Took a wicket with spin and then immediately brought a quick into the attack. Sapien Sharif, as it was yesterday. Figgy drives through extra cover. Excellent shot. It's over-pitched. Beautiful Figgy. Shot. They're just 18 on debut. What a lovely shot through cover that is. Confident start. Paul Radley next to me could barely contain himself as that <laughs> race towards that extra cover boundary is cut off well in the end by Scotland. But a lovely drive. And that would have felt brilliant, wouldn't it? For young Figgy. It's a bit of a shame we don't have Mark Watt versus Chirag Suri for a bit longer. That's a great contest. Yeah, give the fans what they want. Bring him back. You see Chirag Suri is in great touch. They just wristily knocks that down to mid on it's figgy back on strike it's a very accomplished start from Jonathan he said Paul scored stacks of runs in schoolboy cricket. Very highly rated in this UAE setup. Very much so. so sort of guys just you just couldn't avoid being excited by him. Because of the volume of runs he scored. I must say, not that it counts for anything really. He's looked very assured in in the runs he's taken, the judgment of uh, three and the judgment of that single. I got five so far. Didn't get too overexcited. I think we were a bit overexcited <laughs> when he came to the wicket. <laughs> I think he was. In fact, they nearly stacked it on the way out there. <laughs> it's 
It's always hard not to be excited by these players, though. Just 18 years of age. See that scorecard. Richard Aravind, he's only 17 years of age. The only wicket to fall so far, 17 off of 30. He got a little bit bogged down after another fine start. And that one wicket was Hamza to here. He'll continue. One for six from his two overs so far. Yeah, it's hard not to get excited by someone like Jonathan Figgy when you see the weight of runs in junior cricket and you know that he's knocking loudly on the door and you're just waiting for him to get the opportunity. It's hard not to get caught up in it. And he said he's been very confident here, full of intent with his running between the wickets. Remember, it's a national schools league out here where I first heard of Figgy. I think he's 13, scored the first 100 in that competition, playing under 15s. Yes, that's just the sort of thing that happened with him all the way through. He's got a way of it there, driving outside the off stump, outside edge, doesn't carry. And there is a slip in place. Very good running. Chirag Suri turning confidently and early and loudly for the third. You see. It's well kept in. in the end, good piece of fielding. Stuart down there. Lovely shot through cover from Cherik Suri out to that big boundary. It's cut off well. Just two. Suri's going along very nicely here. He could have just cursed him. But he has been superb. He's looked in great touch today. Early call for two from Surrey. Michael Jones doing the fielding. It's a wayward throw in the end. It's quite off balance. He's frustrated with himself. Very good running again, though, from the UE. Yeah, Jones looked as though he'd done the hard bit by getting to the ball as quickly as he did. Looked like he'd, usually in those situations, you'd think the batsman would think better of, better of taking, a, taking a second from there, but they risked it. I think Jones's focus was all on getting to the ball quickly and he was, as you said, off balance when he threw it in and the throw was slightly wayward as a result. So he got through for another two. Yeah, it's good pressure at the moment from the UE, putting Scotland fielders under a bit more scrutiny and making sure they're running hard between the wickets. Something that Figgy seems to do in the field is bring some real energy to the field. He seems to do it at the crease as well at the moment. Big ball of youthful e exuberance. <laughs> as we saw as he ran to the wicket. I wish the camera was trained on him at the time. <laughs> Very nearly made a dramatic introduction. <laughs> but it's great to see, isn't it, that I said the youthful exuberance, the excitement. He's very busy. This time he drives through backward point to here at third man. He manages to cut it off, well fielded in the end. It's two for Figgy. Again, Scotland won't be discouraged by that, though. That man at backward point, fairly interested for a little while. He 
you can see from Figgy in between balls, almost physically, way flicking the bat in his hands, adjusting his gloves and his pads. There's something a bit almost Shander Paul about exactly him. Exactly what I was about to say, yeah. The so feet very close together in his stance as well. Oh and uh, not as open, obviously. Give it time. <laughs> no pressure, young man, but you've just been compared to Jim <laughs> Ryan Shander Paul. <laughs> Good yeah. luck. <laughs> Hitherto, we hadn't put that much pressure on him, have we? Bizarre bit of cricket by Scotland. Chuck the ball to uh, nobody in particular. He's got nearly all the way to the fence. Yeah, because up until that point, we hadn't really put any pressure on him, had we? <laughs> I think people watching the stream can see that we very excited by this young man. Try not to get too carried away, but <laughs> the two of us together <laughs> <laughs> gets thrown out the window quite quickly. After 14 overs, Yui 77 for one. It's just two from that Richie Barrington over. It's good from Scotland all rounder. You would be very happy with this, won't they, Paul? Definitely, bearing in mind the youth as we keep going on about and the inexperience of the top order. So we 77 for one disputed dismissal of 14 against the side of the experience that Scotland have. They'll be absolutely chuffed to bits, I'd have thought, but nothing's won yet, though. Yeah, a long way to go, and we saw earlier on what happened. Scotland got off a good start. Ended up on 220, all out. And as Paul mentioned, such an experienced side, they will be immensely disappointed they didn't go on to a bigger total. Whereas this inexperienced UAE team will be delighted to have pulled themselves back in and then to have made this start as well. The two teenagers at the heart of it, and Chirag Suri. He's only 24 himself, even though he's been around the side for such a long time. He's made a stunning start, moved on to 45. And he's looked very good for those 45 runs. Dylan Budge will bowl the 15th over for Scotland. And a bit of fortune there. You still need 143 runs for victory. Budge will come round the wicket to the left-handed Figgy. tight single but a well run one that's what you were alluding to earlier Paul is how well someone like Fee judged the runs just to judge the running between the wickets so far no 11 runs he's got in international cricket to date Excellent fielding from Budge off his own bowling. It's driven very firmly by Surrey. Excellent fielding in Budge's follow through. The right arm medium pacer. He's 
it's fair to say he's very much medium pace, isn't it, Paul? This evidence so far, yep. Looks like he was slightly off the wrong foot, does he? Gone for just three from that first over. It's good from Budge. 80 for one from 15, the UAE. Yeah, as you mentioned there, Paul, he doesn't seem to quite go off the wrong foot, but bowls as if he does with his, yeah, his arm. arms come over like like a somebody who bowls off the wrong foot tend to. It's pretty yeah. difficult to describe that adequately, isn't it? His arm hoops over, doesn't it? As if it's as if he is, as you say, bowling off the wrong foot. But it's as if he's got in position to bowl and then forgot to send his arms over and rushes him over all at once. It's Barrington that continues and Surrey calls for two very early. And it's comfortable in the end. Moves on to 49 from 45 balls. Such an assured inning so far from Chirag Surrey. in his 14th full ODI for the UAE. nudges it into the offside, calls Figgy through, and Surrey brings up his second ODI 50. Big shake of the fist, he's delighted with it, and rightly so. It's been an excellent knock from Chirag Surrey, raises back to his teammates, applauding on the boundary. Brings up his 50 from 47 deliveries. See there, five fours and a six. It's been excellent from Chirag so far. Looks happy with it. There's no just acknowledgement of oh another fifty. There's fist pumping and all sorts there. Figgy clips off his legs. Chant of oh so Figgy did you say? <laughs> no, you're right. Cherik Suri was absolutely delighted with that fifty. This has his second in full ODI cricket for the UAE. The job's not done, though, by any stretch of the imagination. I think that shot there shows just how well he's seeing it. Get cautious not to be overconfident from this position. Don't waste this start. Yeah, we saw earlier on Matthew Cross all of a sudden playing a reverse sweep when he got to 50. Hadn't played that shot all innings. And wasted such a good start that... I mean, he couldn't have that at that point in time foreseen just how much Scotland would have imploded, but shows what can happen. You've always got to bear it in mind, haven't you? It's be very up to the stumps after Surrey uses his feet to try and go down the ground. Very difficult balance to strike, I'd have thought, between riding the burner that Surrey's obviously on, feels it looks like he's in good touch, but making sure that you're not giving the opposition a sniff. Yeah, and that one other 50 for Chirag came against Nepal in Kuala Lumpur, August 2018, made 65. Were you there that day, Paul? I certainly was not. Wish it was, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Not a bad spot. No, place very dear to my own heart. I 
Figgy continuing to go about his business. So his best innings in a 50-over game for the UAE. Oh, wait a minute, I'm lost. He didn't make a 50 in that game. Maybe it wasn't an ODI. Lovely shot from Chirag Suri, but there's a man out there at point. For those at home, can't see Paul Radley just looking through the list of mm. Chirag Suri's full ODI top scores, racking his brains. His best 50 over innings, definitely, for the UAE was against the Netherlands in Harare. That's not been a full ODI. Just goes to show how bizarre status can be in cricket. Vital innings basically assured UAE of ODI status at the World Cup qualifier. 50 over, obviously, World Cup qualifier last year. 78 not out against the Dutch in Harare. It's not been a one-day international. Communication between the two batsmen there. As they cross between the running for that first first run there, as you could hear Shuri very clearly saying, easy to, easy to, as it was. Yeah, as you mentioned, Paul, it's the confusing nature of ODI recognition. Madness. So we've got two full ODI teams now. One of them clearly wasn't at the time. So 18 months ago now. Anyway. Yeah, 78 that day. And just looking at that scorecard, you see how much has changed in the UAE setup since then. If you want to have a look through that and take us through it, Paul, but you can see just the difference what a, a year or so makes. Yeah, Rohan Mustafa in the side still, Chirag Suri in the side still. Other than that, you've got to get down the order to Ahmed Raza at number nine in the order, and Usman as well. Usman, who actually played a very good hand that day in in harness with Suri, getting the UAE across the line. So it's just four, is it? Four of the eleven. That's just 18 months ago. I think that that 11 would have been very similar up until about six weeks ago, I'd have thought. Yeah, and see, Ro Mustafa was captain back then. Lovely drive again from Figgy. Gets one. See, Suri is a very willing runner. He's pushing that first one very hard. Seemed to suggest that Figgy might need to get his skates on a bit more as well there. Shout for LBW. Figgy seemed to suggest almost immediately that came off his back. Two noises, I thought, on initial viewing. And Figgy, just absentmindedly, not, not for the attention of the umpire or anybody else, did just look at the bottom of his back. Suggested he felt the same. He just caught the end of it on the replay there. Couldn't quite see. 
full toss, driven beautifully through extra cover from Figgy. You don't want to miss out on those. And he has it with that massive boundary out to that far side. You say run free. Almost every other day of the week, that's four. Second time I've noticed this, Dylan Budge's throwing arm is fantastic. You, uh, these two batsmen, we just mentioned how good their running between the wickets is. They'll have to bear that in mind. That is a big boundary out there. Budge throws it with ease by the looks of things. Figgy seems to be a little winded after that. And very much clutching the groin area. Not in a Michael Jackson impression. <laughs> and he's hobbling down. You see, what happened? What happened, Bunny? Feeling when he got to the non striker's end, he called for something from the side. We'll have drinks, UAE 95 for one after 18. See, just for Richard Aravind, the wicket to go. 17 off 30, Chirag Suri, excellent. Reaching his second full ODI half century, and Jonathan Figgy on debut, 20 from 27. Highly impressive so far. And there, Hamza to here, the only man to pick up a wicket. One for 13 from three, we'll have a quick drink. UAE 95 for one after 18. Need a further 126 for victory. 32 overs to go. Just had a quick drink. Big thanks to Paul Radley for joining us from the National newspaper out here. Covered UAE cricket for a very long time. I think I'm right, 15 years or so in here. Keeping an eye on UAE cricket. Very knowledgeable. 
man on all things UAE cricket. Dylan Budge will continue with Chirik Suri on strike. Keen to use his feet. Matthew Cross will be up to the stumps. Surrey drives through backward point. It's full and it was wide. It's well fielded again though. A big boundary out to the far side. It means that boundaries are at a premium when you're hitting to that opposite end to where we are. The square of the wicket is a big hit. Surrey gets two. Lovely drive through cover though. Cover, cover point. Ninety-eight for one. The UAE made an excellent start in pursuit of two hundred and twenty-one for victory. For those of you just joining us, Scotland earlier on one hundred and thirty-eight without loss, then slumped to two hundred and twenty all out. Excellent performance from the UAE to get themselves back into it. Carl Kurtz, the top scorer with 95. He's the one that shared that massive opening stand with Matthew Cross, who made 53. And from then on, UAE were excellent. Roma Staffa, 3 for 35. Junaid Siddiqui, 3 for 49. Kartik Mayapan, 19-year-old leg spinner, just his second ODI, 2 for 39 including the double wicket maiden where he picked up those two wickets, removing Kurtzer and Richie Barrington. Such important wickets. Big appeal for LBW, but it looks high. And the umpire's not interested. See it again here, Budge. He's coming round the wicket to the left hander. This is the replay. Yeah, high and looked a bit leg side. Go back to live pictures here. There's a dot ball just down the leg side. As you've been shown that replay. It's a wide down the leg side. In fact, Figgy this time clips it down to fine leg. Hamza to here coming round to collect. Two runs to Figgy to finish the 19th over. And brings up the 100 for the UE. 101 for one. Just need 120 more from 31 overs then. That required run rate. Below four. From here should be in a good position to go on and notch their first victory in ICC Cricket World Cup League 2. They have just a one point so far. This is their first series of nine that guarantees 36 ODIs for each of the seven nations over the course of the next two and a half years. Callum McLeod to come into the attack for Scotland. Bowling is off spin. Surrey's the man on strike.
flip the pad of Jonathan Figgy and it's run away for four. Mark Watt trying to do the fielding. Running down to fine leg. Wasn't able to keep it in in time. Certainly didn't look like it. He's actually gone down injured. He's actually been given us two leg buys. It looked like Watt didn't keep it in. You see, it just clips Figgy's pad, runs away down towards that boundary. Mark Watt in pursuit. And it clipped the rope, it went for four. Leg buys, but it's only given us two. Now it looks like they've asked the fielders, and yeah, it's been now judged as four leg buys. Well corrected in the end. Better news for Scotland in that is what, after, like he hurt his, uh, himself doing the fielding. But he's up on his feet, albeit he's hobbling a little. Surrey pushing into the offside and saying easy one. And he's right. Single to end the over. Jurek Surrey moving on to 58 from 57. Figgy on debut at the other end. 23 not out from 34 balls. UE 108 for one. From 20 overs. Just need 113 from the remaining 30. Scotland could do with a breakthrough. This partnership worth 46 now. Played very well together, these two. Budge continuing. So he drives into the offside. It's very well run again. Surrey and Figgy have been excellent between the wickets. And this partnership worth 47 for the second wicket. UE going nicely. Figgy pulls off his legs, straight to square leg. And he has his hands on his hips. Surrey looks at him in disbelief. Figgy on debut, the 18 year old, flicks it off of his pads, but straight down the throat of the man at square leg. Said it's a big boundary out there. And it would require a big hit to clear the ropes. 
Figgy very disappointed. But on debut, he's looked good up until that moment. Big breakthrough for Scotland, though. They needed that wicket. 109 for two. 20.3 overs. Basil Hamid is the new man in to join Chirag Suri at the crease. He's 59, not out. Figgy who goes for 23. I said on debut. It's a flamboyant stroke. Had he been hitting to this side of the wick of the of the pitch, probably would have carried all the way, but that longer boundary over there. On the far side to where we're sat means it carried all the way to Joshua Davy. That square leg. It took a routine catch in the end. Peter Della Pena rejoins us for the first time in this second innings. Dylan Budge has made an ODI wicket. Congratulations to number 17. A disappointing way for Figgy to go, wasn't it, Peter? Tell you when the shot came off the bat, I was looking through my camera lines and I went, Ooh, what a shot! That's going for six, and then I realized, oh, he's going for it on the 80 meter boundary. And as you said, if he had tried to play that flick in our direction to the west, it would have been six, 64 meters coming our way. Uh, that extra f 16 meters made all the difference. Turned to six into an easy catch. Having said that, he looks like somebody, when I say he, Jonathan Figgy, like a very, very promising player for the future for the UAE. I was actually more impressed with him than what I've seen out of Ritya Aravind. He just looks a very, very technically sound player and somebody who is somebody to keep an eye on in the future for the UAE. And is still only a teenager making his debut today and, and everything about him technically just looks so short out there with Chirag Suri. Very, very confident for somebody at that age on debut. I don't care if it's Scotland or India or whoever. And if there's 30 people on the ground or 30,000 people on the ground, it's not easy. The mental pressure involved, not just to stand up to the opposition, but to impress your teammates as well. Reward the faith in the coaches. And Jonathan Figgy definitely ticked off all those boxes. It's Mark Watt comes on for his fourth over. And once again, you see this for, I think that's the fourth time now, stopped in his run up when bowling to Chirag Suri. I thought you'd have appreciated with Figgy how busy he was and he's running between the wickets. And that was part of it, absolutely, Barney. Um, the first moment he got to the crease, he was super efficient. Very nice touch. And 
confident, setting off for runs. Had a very good chemistry for his first partnership with Sherog Suri. Some of the threes they ran were especially impressive. The speed between the wickets, between the two of them, and the support, the recognition, the dimensions of the field, all of that. Top to bottom, there was very little you could find fault with the way Jonathan Figgy approached everything in the innings. Pace, spin. Yeah, it was just that one shot for his dismissal that will be disappointing. It's the only time he showed an unawareness, really, of the dimensions of the pitch. Even though it was a wonderful, flamboyant shot, hitting to that part of the ground, he should really have been aware such a big hit required. And he picked out square leg, Joshua Davey. This budge that continues. Surrey on strike, 62 not out from 64 balls. Paul Radley, who just came off a commentary during those drinks, said as he was leaving, he didn't want to leave because he thought he might jinx it. With Figgy and Surrey going so well. Maybe we can just blame Radders. It's all your fault, Paul. And for the social media savvy folks out there, you can blame Paul at Paul Radley on Twitter. Into that 23rd over, you're 120 for two. I've been impressed by Chirag Suri today, Peter. He's looked in fine, Nick. On 65, not out now. The only other time I can remember him playing this good, he had a very, very good, I want to say it was an 87 or an 88 against Afghanistan in the Intercontinental Cup, the very, very last Intercontinental Cup match that was played in 2017 in December in Abu Dhabi against Afghanistan. He looked very, very good on that occasion. His dad was the lone fan in the stands waving a UAE flag. I saw his dad at Sharjah last week. In one of the earlier matches, I haven't spotted him today. He's usually around to support Shirag. Basil Hamid goes over extra cover. It's one bounce for 
glorious strike. There's a man catching at cover. There's another on the ring. No one out past them. They're almost in a straight line from where we are. And Hamid goes inside out over the two of them. A lovely stroke. Now, if that gets clipped off, that'll be one that Paul Radley will be sharing on Twitter all day long, Barney. I'm expecting a plethora of retweets at Paul Radley. Has he paid you to <laughs> mention his account? Trying to get his follower numbers up. And a lovely shot to follow up. Basil Mead just using the pace to sweep it down through the fine leg for four. Watch a strayed onto leg stump. And Hamid sweeping off of that length. Very fine. Races away for four. Hamid moves on to 12. Just eight balls. Hamid, who's made his debut in this series, 25 against USA and Sharjah. And then 38. And they, those two met again here at the academy just a few days ago. And this much changed top four for the UAE. Yeah, that half century you're mentioning, Peter, is Chirag's sole first class 50. His games always seem like it's better suited to the longer forms. And with the demise of that competition now, it might be restricted a bit to first class opportunities. But the 50 over format, opening the batting. He has plenty of overs to do what he's doing right now. And in that sense, it reminds me in some ways of Natish Kumar of Canada. Natish Kumar, for the longest time, was somebody who would be characterized by everybody up in Canada as somebody who's suited to first-class cricket. He's a multi-day player. He's not somebody you would envision as a one-day cricketer or a T20 cricketer. Well, guess what? Canada fell out of the Intercontinental Cup. And it was survive or perish for Natish Kumar. You have to adapt or sayonara to your cricket career in an associate cricket country. Or your options are limited to 50 over cricket and T20 cricket. And to Natish Kumar's credit, he has done just that. Anybody who saw him at the T20 qualifier here in October would see he has in a... Darwinistic sense survived and adapted his game over the years spent a considerable amount of effort at MCC Loughborough training and honing his skills and reshaping his game to become a much more efficient 50 over cricketer in particular and then transferring that down to T20 cricket He's somebody who, even through his physical maturation at university, he's never been a muscular player. He's very wiry, but his timing, his wrist strength, forearm strength, his invention of shots like playing a reverse sweep, playing a switch hit. In the last two years or so, he's really added so many dimensions to his batting game that for a lot of people in Canada who first saw Natish Kumar when he debuted, never in a million years would you be imagining Natish Kumar as a, a ferocious T20 striker, switch hitting and reverse sweeping and doing all that kinds of stuff. And he had a couple knocks in the T20 World Cup qualifier, won three consecutive Man of the Match awards. And that included a win over Ireland, 
And in one of those games, I think he scored 81 off 38 balls. Who would have ever imagined that Tish Kumar scoring at a strike rate in excess of 200 in a T20 match, or any other match for that matter. And it was a product of working very, very hard to ensure that he wouldn't be somebody who falls through the cracks because that first class 40 opportunity is limited. Again, if he had his preference, he would have stayed in England after graduating MCC Law Pro. He wanted to pursue a first class county career, but he encountered the same problem that Anshin Manrath faced, that's well known to people in the associate community, former Hong Kong captain, was going to school in England, was in line to receive a contract offer from Middlesex, but had to be withdrawn because of the restrictions against associate players. Essentially, anybody who wants to play as an overseas pro in county cricket or in English cricket has got to be from a test nation or there's just no opportunity. And it wasn't until Afghanistan got test status that guys like Rashid Khan, Muhammad Nabi, Mujib Rahman got opportunities to play county cricket in the T20 West, even though those guys were playing in the IPL and the CPL well before then, before they got their test status. England was the final frontier because of those very, some people might say archaic, visa restrictions and immigration restrictions where they only classify players who come from a test status nation as being worthy of classified as an overseas pro with that visa category. And so it's harmed guys like Anshuman Rath. It's harmed somebody like Nitish Kumar from getting opportunities to develop. But Nitish Kumar has taken that and tried to funnel his energy into, again, reshaping his 50-over cricket to T20 cricket. Now that's something that Chirac Suri, four-day competition, the I-Cup is no longer there. He's really got to work over the next few years as he continues to develop to really mold his game to cater for the long term into the limited overs formats. It's Basil Hamid here. Looks to drive, gets an under edge. Very well run too. And the encouraging thing about that here is that in this innings, he is demonstrating. He has learned some of those things through an experience like being at the IPL with Gujarat Lions and their squad, going to the Global T20 Canada, getting those kinds of opportunities. He's absorbing the lessons. And it's showing off here where he's scoring basically at a run of ball. Yeah, something that Chirag Suri's been working on very hard over the last year or so, especially. It was when he was initially called up to the IPL, Gujarat Lions. He was still a young lad. He still is a young lad at 24. He was a bit of a surprise call-up, though. Not just because he was from the UAE, and because he was quite inexperienced, but also because of the way he played. Wasn't traditionally seen as a 20-over specialist. But he has adapted his game. Even in the T10 recently, you saw him, when he got the opportunity, perform very well. Hit a very good 25 against Gladiate, the sorry, the Calanders for the Bangla Tiger. Bangla Tigers. Hit very strong straight. He showed that he's been working on his power hitting. And today he's been full of class. It's on 67 from 72. It's his highest score in full ODI cricket. And he's approaching his highest score in 50 over cricket for the UAE. Paul Radley was mentioning earlier, 78. And he's also, Chirag, someone who's shouldering greater responsibility with all the absentees. Ooh, big appeal from Mark Watt. You see, he bowled it from <laughs> well behind the the stumps when he releases it, catching Basil Hamid off guard. He's bowled it from pretty much where the umpire is, just outside the line of off stump. Basil Hamid hits his back leg, sweeping. 
it's quite a USA, quite a few USA players over the years who I've seen do that play, ball from behind the crease, to try and catch people off guard. And you've got to be quite skilled as a bowler to do that because not only are you trying to catch the batsman off guard, but you've got to adjust your length. Instead of bowling 22 yards, you're essentially bowling 24 yards. And you've got to be very confident to be able to make sure you get that ball in there. Mark Watt nearly got him, as you said. Barney just struck outside the line of off stump. Good decision by the umpire. Hamid has come in and looked very assured as well. 17 from 20. And these two are put on 28 for the third wicket. That seems to have flown by. The required run rate down at just a smidgen over three and a half. 84 required for the UAE. So he pulls straight to square leg. Michael Jones, the simple task. Well, he didn't really make up his mind there, Shirag Suri. He was in between keeping it down on the ground and trying to elevate for six, did neither. Hit it quite flat, never got more than 10 yards above the ground and Michael Jones who was hanging in about three yards off the rope to begin with judged it very very well picked it up in overcast skies here and came in just about another two or three yards got onto his knees comfortable catch taken at about thigh height and Shirag Suri not sure if you could hear it through the microphones but he slammed to his pads, he's livid with himself. Having gotten such an excellent start on 67. And he's given it away here. Not exactly the greatest bumper by Whittingham, but they were bowing to a plan. They had the man out for that shot, deep square leg. And Chirag Suri falls into the trap. And now, here really similar to the Scotland innings, UA looked like they were cruising for quite a while, and now all of a sudden, the match has shifted close to even, Barney. It's that magic 138 mark as well that Scotland put on for the first wicket before they slumped to 210 all out. And all of a sudden, UAE, UAE 138 for free. They were coasting while Chirag Suri was at the crease. Fortunately, Basil Hamid has started very well. So it's not two batsmen starting again. But Mohamed Usman is the new man on strike. We mentioned it earlier, the UAE didn't bowl too short, testing out the middle of the pitch. All of a sudden, Stuart Whittingham bending his back a little. And it's brought about that wicket, the important wicket of Chirag Suri. As Peter said, he might have bruised his shin. The way that he smashed his pads with his bat as he walked off, clearly frustrated. Himself for getting out after making such a good start. There was a hundred for the taking, wasn't there, for, for Chirag? It's been quite remarkable, the number of hundreds we've seen given away this week. Kyle Kutzer, earlier this innings, earlier this match, excuse me. Chirag Suri, Aaron Jones, Monarch Patel. Callum McLeod. K 
Callum McLeod, absolutely. It's rare that come to one of these associate events, whether it was in the old World Cricket League structure, the World Cricket League Championship, or now Cricket World Cup League 2. It's very rare that you go through an entire series and nobody scores a century. But we're on the verge of that happening here. Unless Basil Hamid <laughs> decides to score the next 82 runs with <laughs> Mohamed Usman <laughs> blocking out of the other end. That'd be some innings if that did happen. Basil Hamid, in the early stages of his UAE career, has a real big chance now to really lay down a marker for him, for his long-term position in this side with a big knock today. Scotland have a little think about their plans to the UAE batsman, Mark Watt will be the bowler of this 28th over. UAE, 138 for free. 23 to go. 83 more runs required. Scotland have perked up a little in the field. run down through third man just the two definitely a bit more noise coming from George Muncy and Dylan Budge on the straight boundary long on and long off They're definitely aware of what happened in the first innings. One of the funny things about this pitch, Barney, through the three matches here, there's plenty of runs to be had once you get set, but a lot of batsmen have found it difficult to get set. There's always something in it for the bowlers, and you feel like you're vulnerable early. And I'm expecting a slip to come in here. Once Usman gets on strike, it would be a positive move anyway, even though Mark Watt's turning the ball into the left-hander. Fresh batsman to the crease. We saw that edge from Hamid to start the over. And I would have thought they would try and attack a little bit more here as an opportunity to exploit the recent breakthrough. But they're not going to go for that slip fielder. No, Barrington comes in on the drive there on the offside. Callum McLeod in a bit tighter at mid-wicket. Mid-off is up inside the circle. Scotland really taking their time with the field positionings. I think part of that is to do with the theatre of Mark Watt. He's had an interesting back and forth with some of these UAE batsmen today. We were trying to understand what was going on when Chirag Suri was on strike. He kept pulling up. He obviously <laughs> had it done to him yesterday and thought, <laughs> try himself today. He's great to watch, though, isn't he, Mark Watt? Ro Mustafa for the UAE. It's always an event when he's bowling. He's somebody who, when I interviewed him last year, he comes from the Glenn McGraw mold, where unlike some players who try and play down, oh, I'm not a fan, I don't remember anything, I just go out there to win the games. Mark Watt remembers every single wicket he's ever taken. And not only does he remember it, he makes sure to let the batsman remember it too. He's never one to hesitate to remind Somebody new to the crease. How many times he's got them out? When he got them out? How he got them out? He likes to play that mind game. And he's actually coming off the field. Alistair Evans coming on his place. He's feeling his groin a little by the looks of it. 
Well, remember a few overs ago he was down at deep third man, tumbling, trying to save a boundary, and he pulled up lane there. Historically, he's had some ankle issues. He's had issues with shin splints. So he needs quite a lot of constant... Peel for a catch down the leg side. Scotland look convinced. But the umpire just stretches his arms out for a wide. And the way he delayed it, it seemed like the umpire was trolling Scotland a little. You see the replay here. Whittingham short to Hamid. He's trying to pull. That's an awfully long way away from the body to take that long to call it a wide. So he was thinking long and hard and whether or not I mean, he did feather an edge down there. It was clearly not. Any doubt whether it was an issue with the line in terms of a wide. And it didn't look like it came off the arm either. It was far too wide of the body to have come off the arm. It was either the bat or a wide. And I didn't hear anything. Did you hear anything, Barney? No. It's quite hard to tell on the replay. But Scot the Scotland players were ad adamant that it had taken either a glove or the bat. Very confident appeal. Finishing up the point about Mark Watt. He's somebody who always keeps the physio in business on tour. You're never worried about getting the maximum value out of the physio when Mark Watt is on tour. He needs a good massage to take care of the issue with the shin splints. And he's got his ankles regularly taped up. Whatever else. Mentioning how he keeps, he gives reminders to the batsman of what's his record and how he's had them before. He seems like someone that needs that bit of fire and bit of edge to his game. Is that fair to say? Well, again, growing up, he wanted to be uh, a center back or a left back. I forget which one it is. He told me he wanted to be a footballer. I know that much. And so he's got a very aggressive sport mentality. Were you here early enough, Barney? Was he the masked man who gave the slide tackle to Safian Sharif to knock him out of the game? <laughs> From the sound of it, it could have been. <laughs> He's a very, very intense character, Mark Watt. Almost in the similar mold to a roll-off and a Merva with the Netherlands. He's a very, very, very intense cricketer. Roll-off and a Merva, whether the ball hits the middle of the bat, misses off stump, hits the pad, every single ball roll-off and a Merva delivers. Oh! Oh, hands on his head, hands over his head, almost in that Shane Warren style. Mark Watt, every single ball. Oh, oh. Every single ball, he thinks he's almost got a wicket. Part of that is theater. Part of that is getting into the mind of the batsman, thinking, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. Hey, it makes for great viewing. He is a great cricketer to watch. 29 overs gone. Yui, 145 for free. They need 76 more from 21 overs. Plenty of time to do just that. Scotland need wickets. And with Mark Watts still off the field receiving treatment, Joshua Davey will come back into the attack. A 
Azul Hamid, the set batsman, 23 from 26, off to a very good start. Usman, one from 10, taking his time. He does have time as well. He can be patient. Just worth noting that Mohamed Usman earlier was slated to come in at seven, according to the team sheets that we're given at the start of play. Said earlier he's a very good player to be coming in at seven. He's in at five. Looking at that Yui order, there's still Roma Stafford to come. Still Darius De Silva, who was down at five. And also CP Rizwan. Long batting order for the UAE. Giving inspiration to every club cricketer and Twitter egg who sends random messages saying, I'm an all-rounder, I bat, I bowl. You are going very, very deep today. And you've had a few messages like that down the years, haven't you, Peter? One or two. <laughs> per day? <laughs> Usually the inbox gets a bit busier when a USA tour is happening. Surprisingly, it's been quite sparse on this tour. Maybe people are starting to get the message seeing Cameron Stevenson that there's not really a vacancy to be had. Has anything ever come of those messages? I always politely refer people on to whoever is the lead administrator in whatever country they're looking to get an opportunity with. they're genuinely interested the least I can do is put them in touch with the right people and they can carry it forward from there I'm not in the business of dashing dreams Barney anyone in the UAE after some sort of local contract again at Paul Radley send it his way No doubt Paul has some outstanding stories to tell in this regard as well. Let's look at that UE scorecard so far. Jurag Suri top scoring with 67. And the two young lads, Richard Aravind making 17, Jonathan Figgy 23, and Basil Hamid leading the charge now unbeaten 24 from 32 as we said lots of batting to come Roa Mustafa Darius De Silva in amongst it and then the Scottish bowlers it's three wickets picked up by Dylan Budge Hamza Tahir and Stuart Whittingham so far Mark Watts gone off for some treatment Let's see what happens with him Scotland be hoping he can come back on and bowl those three remaining overs that he has been talking about the noise levels on the field this week Barney at the moment these two national teams are facing stiff competition from somebody in a very intense CrossFit workout 
behind us. The ICC Academy shares space with a fitness facility. Not sure if this person is ready for a tough mutter or the world's strongest man. They're making a lot of noise, though. Yeah, quite guttural at times as well. The Tough Mud has actually just been here about a month ago, so they've missed the boat on that front. There was power lifting at Hamdan Sports Complex as well a few weeks ago. I'm sure there's something coming up. There's always something happening here in the UAE. Yeah, there's big, <laughs> big groans coming from over there. It's an outdoor gym just to the left of where we are. We mentioned that the UA, uh, sorry, Scotland became a bit more vocal. They've now gone quite quiet again, haven't they? Dylan Budge with a revolutionary fielding tactic on the boundary there. He would have been too regardless. He took the scenic route, didn't he? To <laughs> running around the ball to collect it. I think he gave away the fact that he's a, a right hand, right side dominant person, Barney. I mean, Paul's two men out, but it pierces the, the gap between them at fine leg and square leg. And Yui bring up 150. It's Michael Jones and Joshua Davy, the two men out. Great piece of gap finding from Basil Hamid. Well, he put so much effort into that shot, he might have strained the ribcage muscle. Down on the ground, not sure what's happening. If he collided, maybe? Definitely wasn't with his own partner. If he collided potentially with the bowler, I'm not sure what happened here. I'll have another look. Stuart Weddingham pulling out his best rugby moves. Basil Hamid was looking to the square leg boundary while he was running down the pitch. And so he didn't have his eye on Stuart Whittingham. <laughs> Straight out of Laurel and Hardy. For anybody who has an Instagram account, you're going to need to go to Wikipedia for that. Yeah, they collided. Whittingham checking that he's all right afterwards. Me just taking his time to gather his breath. And we'll have drinks as he does so. One ball left in the 31st over. UAE, 152 for free. 69 required. We've mentioned your yellow notepads throughout, Peter. Anything that you can glean from it from today? Anything standing out in those numbers? Well, my ink is running low. <laughs> I've gone through, I usually go through about one pen and one legal pad a tour. We're getting close to the end of this one. One thing that does come out in some of these stats is the momentum shifts. <laughs> Shane Berger talked about it yesterday post-match and Cameron Stevenson as well. That the teams that, that have succeeded the most in this tri-series are the ones who've been able to 
sustain momentum the longest. And once that momentum gets interrupted, quite often the teams on the batting side in particular have found it difficult to rebuild and reestablish that momentum. And there have been some very, very long partnerships on this tour. There's a 140 run stand by USA, had a 138 run stand today by Scotland. And yet, even in those matches, wickets have fallen bang, 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 bang. When those stands get broken. So even though the required run rate is very, 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 very manageable right now for the UAE, Scotland are by no means out of this match. On that front, I can't remember a series where it's swung so much in terms of the advantage between the two teams throughout this, throughout all the matches here. Real great pendulum swings. Shows how competitive these three sides are as well. Any other trends from the yellow pad that you can call upon? One thing that's impressed me is the, up until now recently, in the last few overs since that wicket, just the lack of dot ball accumulation. These teams have been very, very efficient at rotating the strike. And then once you get a wicket, that's where the opportunity for the dot balls to pile up. Usman, one off 10 balls here. And the knock-on effect that that's having on Hamid. Hamid was very, very fluent when Suri was at the crease with him. All of a sudden, that dot ball accumulation on Usman is starting to rub, rub off on Hamid as well. Nine dot balls in his last two overs after being in quite a good rhythm with Suri. And you feel like because of that, that lack of rhythm that's taking place between this batting pair, you do feel like there is a vulnerability there for Scotland to strike again with Josh Davey running in. Yeah, it feels like there's an opportunity building right now. Quite often through the tour, just going through my no bed, when you see it sounds silly, it sounds simple. When you see batsmen facing three balls and over each, whether that's six singles or a two single dot, or two single dot, whatever it is, as long as they're facing close to an even amount of deliveries each over, they're able to stay in rhythm. Once you get these chunk overs where they're not rotating the strike, they're bogged down on strike, Generally, what's tended to happen is the guy who's not on strike or who's starved of the strike for very long, if they've been at the crease for a while, then they get into a mode where they almost have to restart their innings and they become, as I said, vulnerable to being a target on the bowling side despite however long they've already spent at the crease. All confusion. They've got away with it. And this is a product of that. The lack of rotation of the strike. Dot ball pressure building up. Keeping a guy at one end. All of a sudden, you start to lose your head. And you're not in a mode of being able to recognize what should have been a very easy single. And after that confusion, you feel like you we have got been let off the hook a little. Because it's Richie Barrington doing the fielding. And as we've seen so far in this series, he's an exceptional fielder. He just lost his footing, though. It's a nice shot from Mohamed Usman. Feeling outside off stump. Going through point. You can see the UE batsman more productive in this over. That leg by and then two more singles. Four from the first four balls.
just going back to that point again, Xavier Marshall was somebody who is a classic example of that. He made a half century yesterday, but in his innings, he was scoring very, very efficiently, very quickly. Got to 45 off 52 balls in 15 overs. And then overs 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Only scored five runs. Didn't have much of the strike. And then he got out two balls after reaching his 50. Consequence of the fact that he was basically scoring at three runs and over for the first 15 overs. And then he was scoring less than a run and over over the next sequence. And just that rhythm that he lost created that opening for the bowling side. And so if Usman is somebody new to the crease, taking a long time to get settled, if he can't maintain that rhythm fresh to the crease, there is that opportunity to attack Hamid at the other end. Because all of a sudden, the concern is that he's going to start going cold. Yeah, and we saw it with the UAE as well. At the top of the order, Fritcher Aravind seemed to be on 17 for an eternity before he ended up getting out. And it's because he was on 17 for an eternity. 17 off his first six overs. And then... 15 straight dot balls over the course of the next five overs leading into that wicket. Whittingham, who continues. As we noted, it feels like we're going through one of those periods again now. Scotland doing very well to build dot ball pressure. Again, a bit noisier in the field as well. Great shot from Mohamed Usman. That relieves some of the pressure. Whittingham goes short. And there's a man very close. Let's say a leg gully. It's Cal McLeod. On a rare occasion wearing long sleeves. Usually he's in short sleeves. Could pick him out by his voice. He's been quite trippy. He was in Usman's ear. Quite constantly before that ball was delivered, and you could see him put his hands over his head and over his mouth. <laughs> he, the trap was there. He thought the ball was coming his way, and it was just wide of Calum at backward square leg. Would have taken a very good catch had it even gone straight to him, because it was hit very hard by Mohamed Usman. will be glad to have relieved some of that pressure. Four fo followed up by single. The UAE under 19 side back over watching the seniors. Brings a bit more noise, a bit more support for the home side. And a bit more comedy at times as well. <laughs> Earlier, for those not at the ground, when UAE came off the ground, his his academy teammates, the under-19 teammates, were shouting at Veritia Aravind. Aravind, sir, Aravind, sir, can I please get your autograph? Sir, one photo, autograph, please. <laughs> he kept his head down quite sheepishly in front of his senior teammates, Veritia Aravind.
I have a lot of time for that. Very good. They seem like a really good bunch of lads. To be fair, they've been over here supporting the seniors. They were giving Rich Arvin big cheers and Figgy as well when he was batting. Yes, of course, January's a big month for those guys. Off to South Africa for the under-19 ICC Cricket World Cup. Very good running there by Basil Hamid. Hundred and sixty one for free then, UAE. Seventeen overs remaining. Sixty runs required. There was a period about an hour ago where it did get quite brighter than it had been. The sun was peeking out to the west, crept back behind the clouds again as we're getting towards the traditional sunset time here at this time of year in Dubai. Yeah, was it coming up to 10 to 5? local time this is about when the lights would go on they've been on for the last five hours a peculiar day had a brief rain delay 15 minute rain delay after 42 overs in the first innings it's been quite overcast they had the lights on then early or midway through the first innings they've been on ever since here at the academy Davy coming round the wicket to Mohamed Usman. Put a lot of effort into that slower ball. The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, they would have been quite proud of the hard sell he was given that. And we're still missing today's heel. Mark Watt. Is he back out there? The heel is missing because of the heel, potentially. Oh, no. He's back on the field. Of course he's back on the field. We can hear him making the noise. He's there just on your screen. That mid off. Sorry, mid on to the right hander. Now on strike. Battle Hamid. feel like Mark Watt would enjoy being a heel. He wants the heat from the audience. I hope there's some wrestling aficionados who are picking up on our terminology. We're dropping on the stream. Otherwise, we apologize. <laughs> Good slow ball bounce though from Joshua Davey. Oh, oh. Top edge from Basil Hamid. And Mark Matthew Cross had to adjust his position, diving low to his right. He's had to go a long way to his right as well. He just comes out of his outstretched right hand. It would have been a great catch. Well, Josh Davies has been bowling that plane. He's been continuing with that slower bouncer, slower ball throughout the over. I mean, struggling to time it. 
Three times beaten, finally on the third one, draws the edge, and Matthew Cross is just slightly wrong-footed. He was leaning to his left initially, had to overcorrect, get back to his right. Still did brilliantly to get a hand to it. I thought it was going to stick, and it looked like when his elbow hit the ground, that's when the ball popped out on the landing because it was in his glove temporarily. And Scotland really needed that one to stick. Yeah, it's a great over from Joshua Davey. Just went for two from it. He's gone for 22 from his seven. He's bowled very well today. Yeah, Matthew Crosby. Disappointing once he's got there. He'd have wanted to cling on to it. As Peter says, he's initially going to his left and then had to adjust to go to his right. Normally, that kind of top edge from a short ball as well would have gone higher rather than lower because the pace was taken off it. Went very low to his right. He did very well to get there, though. It's a big dive. He's an athletic talent, Matthew Cross. From Aberdeen. Very, very proud. Cricketing heritage in Aberdeen. One of Don Bradman's last matches in the UK was in Aberdeen. On the Invincible Invincibles tour of 1948. Lovely drive by Mohammed Usman, but there's a mix up. Oh, direct hit. Basil Hamid would have been gone. George Munsey was the man doing the the collecting and the throw after a fine stop in cover. Caused the well, ended up to be a bit of mayhem. And it looked like the throw was on target, and it looked like to me, it bounced over the stumps. The throw looked like it was in line with the stumps, and I think it just hit a part of the square that gave it a bit springier bounce that took it over the stumps and the bales, or else Hamid would have been on his way for 33. Was it Carl Kurtzer, the man? In cover, who did the initial piece of fielding? The captain, generally active in the ring. Earlier in his career, he was a fixture on the boundary, pulled off a highlight reel catch in a T20 World Cup near the start of his career for Scotland. And now that he's the captain, he spends most of his time in the ring. Rarely do you see him on the boundary. It's Hamid, back cuts through backward point. Hamza to here, runs round and cuts it off. Two to the UE batsman. Lovely bit of fielding. And you can see Paul Radley actually there on your screen. Reminder that's at Paul Radley. I hope he's being inundated. Good bouncer from Stuart Whittingham. Great carry through to Matthew Cross. Hamid pulled out just at the last minute. Well, they're continuing with this short ball plan. It's already paid off once today. They got Chirac Suri. Now caught a deep square leg. Michael Jones, easy catch. And they've still got deep fine leg, deep square leg. That cover sweeper and deep third man in place. So you can expect Whittingham and David to continue to bang it in short. It almost paid off with another wicket in the last over. Yeah, it's a definite ploy from Scotland. Michael Jones here, right in front of us. I'll be on his toes. As a left-hander comes on, Jones goes in front of point. It's now Dylan Budge out on that far boundary. Square leg. Those two, fine leg and a third man on the rope.
in that 35th over. 167 for free, the UAE. You need 54 more runs for victory from 15 overs. And the Scotland need wickets, and they need them quickly, you'd imagine. Basil Hamid going along nicely in 36. He has slowed down recently, though. Mohamed Usman, the other man, not out on nine. Just two boundaries in the last 11 overs for the UAE. One of them flicked by Hamid through deep square leg, splitting the gap between Jones and Davey on the boundary. And Cal McLeod is going to come back for another burst of off spin. Came on it before in the 20th over. Seven runs came in the over, but only three to him. There were four leg buys. And Mark Watt, because he spent an extended period of time off the field. That's part of the reason why he's not bowling here. He's got to still wait out a bit of time from the looks of it before he's going to be allowed. Also, Cal McLeod. It's a part-time option being brought on. I mean, the right-hander on strike, but with a left-hander, the worst idea. Just turning the ball away from Usman. A lovely late cut from Basil Hamid. Kept very low, deep in his crease. Played it very late. Runs it down through to third man for free. That was the billiards pool cue shot. <laughs> he just got the chalk ready on the cue stick. Aiming for the corner pocket through third man. Lovely timing, using the pace on the ball. Just scored it fine and well run by Usman for that third. Yeah, it's a lovely shot. Basil Hamid's looked very nice here. Just his third ODI for the UAE. 39 not out now, 55 balls. It's been very assured in this middle order, Basil Hamid. So it's quite good. As Cal McLeod has a word with his PS4 FIFA soccer mate, Mark Watt. We had an injury in pregame warm-ups today with Safi Entry. I've been told anecdotally there's quite a few injuries that happen in the hotel room on tour when these guys are playing their PS4 video games. <laughs> can get quite intense. One of the curious things I've discovered on tour. Somebody in these teams is always tasked with the responsibility to pack a PS4 or some other game console in their luggage for the sake of the entire team to keep them occupied on an extended tour. Because as extravagant as Dubai is, no... Each hotel room does not come equipped with its own PS4. Or Xbox. Ever been a gamer, Peter? Uh, 
I retired from video gaming after I built a successful dynasty in John Madden football. <laughs> Centered around Adrian Peterson. I'm a New York Giants fan through and through growing up, but Adrian Peterson is a John Madden football legend, one of the rare players who had a 99 rating, and you could not tackle him. So when you created your franchise mode, you drew him into your team, or you just played as the Minnesota Vikings so you could be Adrian Peterson. Hamza to here comes back into the attack for Scotland. Bowl just three over so far. One for 13. When I spent my semester abroad in Australia, I wanted to buy a copy of Ricky Ponting Cricket to bring back to the States, but I was told it wouldn't work in the U.S. without a special chip on the different PlayStation consoles that are sold b between continents, and I didn't want to waste $60 on a Ricky Ponting Cricket game I wasn't going to be able to play when I got back to America. But I've been told that is the classic game that cricket fans around the world played. Zuzman goes straight. Lovely drive, mid mid off inside the circle. Ah, but Usman releasing the shackles a little bit. Driving for one bounce four. See that again, it's a lovely shot from Mohamed Usman. Been very patient, very cautious so far. Lovely shot. Interesting angle from Hamza Tahir, slanting it across the left-hander, coming around the stumps, not turning it back enough. And it allowed Usman to free the arms with confidence to clear mid-off. So UAE, 177 for free. This partnership worth 39 now. 44 to win. 13 overs remaining. 78 balls left in this innings. 44 runs required. Scotland need to make something happen. Yeah, for me it was Brian Lara cricket. For the commentary more than anything. Would glitch all over the place. In the air. And six. And out. And four. Excellent start from Callum McLeod. His first four balls, that's the first single to Basil Hamid. Hamid is 42 not out now, surpassing his 38 against the USA three days ago. That was his highest score so far from just two full ODIs for the UAE.
takes the four runs from that Callum McLeod over. 181 for free. 40 from 72 balls. It's all UAE need to get their first win of this ICC Cricket World Cup League Two campaign. to keep Mohamed Usman on strike. Scotland have to be very good in the ring now. And pulled just short of the man at square leg. Looked like he was going to be the third UAE batsman just to pick a fielder out on a square leg boundary. It's Dylan Budge who's out there. When it came off the bat, I thought he was in play, but didn't look like he read it well off the bat, Dylan Budge. Because he never really reacted, never took a step in from the rope, just let it bounce in front of him. And I think if he had picked it up much cleaner off the bat, he could have possibly converted it into a chance. But again, the sun setting the background, not easiest to pick it up. Yeah, especially as we enter sort of twilight part of the day. It's not the easiest at all. A white ball can blur sometimes. And with 11 overs to go, the UAE Need 36 for victory. Basil Hamid, 45 not out. Standing on the verge of a first ODI 15, just his third game. Hamid Usman, the other man not out, 17. This partnership worth 47. It's been very measured from this pair. <laughs> That's not <laughs> quite a reflection of how it's been so far as Usman launches Callum McLeod over his head for a massive six. Basil Hamid at the non-striker's end, twirls his bat like Jadeja to celebrate the shot. Clean strike in the slot, got the width outside off stump on about a fifth stump line. And the biggest strike of the day, clear over the side screen. Now UAE just 30 away from victory. Yeah, as Peter says, it soared over the strike the sight screen. It's a massive hit that. If we're keeping up the wrestling symbolism, Barney, that was a people's elbow. Finishing move for the UAE. They're looking like they're going to coast from here. Seven wickets in hand. 30 needed with 10 plus overs to go. As Usman pulls straight to where we are, mid wicket for a one bounce four. UAE putting their foot down a little bit now. Callum McLeod drops short. Usman 
just dispatches it over mid wicket. And it's Smith Patel, who's been on commentary throughout this series, who does the fielding. <laughs> Excellent stuff, this, from the UAE. Peter, coming to the end of your stint on commentary for this series. What's your big takeaways from the matches we've seen here across Sharjah and Dubai? Biggest thing is the parity between these sides. In spite of the depth issues that UAE has, to come back from such a decisive mauling, really, at the hands of USA losing by 98 runs, to now come back against Scotland here and really be on course for an emphatic win, considering the fact that they were staring at a 300-plus total at 138 for none in the first innings. Just the parity between these three sides has been quite remarkable. Something we've seen throughout associate cricket as a whole, but within this series particularly, there's not an awful lot that separates any of these teams in this League Two competition, whether it's USA currently at the top, Scotland close up behind them. Even Papua New Guinea made so much about during the T20 qualifier losing their first eight matches, and yet they go and advance all the way to the final of the T20 World Cup qualifier. So in the first three tri-series so far in League Two in Aberdeen, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and now here in Dubai and Sharjah, parity is a standout feature of this associate competition. Absolutely, and it's shaping up already to be a very even, highly competitive ICC Cricket World Cup League Two. Thank you for Peter De La Pena from ESPN Crick Info for joining us on comms, not just today, but throughout these matches. He's given us a highlight reel of commentary. Here comes Rusty, will live long in the memory. Usman clips off his legs into the leg side. Dropped by Hamza to here. Chipped back to him from Mohammed Usman. It's a pretty simple chance, but he shelled it, the Scotland spinner. Coming forward to collect it in his follow through. Sloppy, and they've needed a breakthrough. This partnership worth 62, and it's presented to them. It's Mohammed Usman just chipped it back down the ground. That's poor from Hamza to here. The UE now go to 200 for free from 41 overs. Need 21 for a victory, nine to go. Mark Watt comes back into the attack. The UAE under-19 team that are watching on, thinking that Hamid's gone to 50 there. 
He hasn't quite. He's moved to 49. Jump the gun a little bit there. Young UAE side. Usman, you'll see, likes to play that sweep very, very fine to the spinners. He's actually got in trouble doing that. The T20 World Cup qualifiers recently tried that shot and played on. Going way too fine. square and this time it will bring up Basil Hamid's first ODI half century for the UAE in his third appearance <laughs> to the delight of the UAE under 19 side and his teammates it's been a fantastic knot from Basil Hamid 50 from 73 balls and he's including three fours as well he's been excellent throughout this innings playing a key role just to make sure that UAE get over the line. They need just 17 runs for victory now. And Osman edges past Matthew Cross, runs away for four down to third man to end the 42nd over. UAE 208 now for three. Eight overs to go, just 13 runs required. It's been an excellent performance from the UAE in this final game of the Tri-Series. Hamza to here, the bowler, 43rd over. Have to put that disappointment behind him from his last. Usman just chipped it straight back to him. He held it in his follow through. A simple chance, really, in the end. It's Hamid on strike for the UAE. It's 13 required. an excellent partnership from these two batsmen. 71 now it's worth this fourth wicket. And they've just brought the calmness to the situation. Ease the UAE to within touching distance of this first win for them. Hamid goes over extra cover. He's done that a couple of times today. Such a superb shot. Inside out, using his feet to the spinner. Going with the spin over extra cover. Glorious four from Basil Hamid. He really looks like a great find for the UAE in his first series for the country. And after everything that's happened in UAE cricket over the last couple of months, 
mass exodus of players. They look to have found some real gems. Three teenagers are featured in this series. Rich Aravin, the 17 year old wicketkeeper batsman. He's looked good throughout, opening the batting. Hasn't looked daunted by any situation. Jonathan Figgy today, making his ODI debut, looked brilliant for his 23 off 36. Got out in, it'll be frustrating fashion in the end, but one that you can fairly excuse an 18 year old on debut. And then Kartik may up and the leg spinner also looks a great find. Took two in very important wickets today. Helped change the game after Scotland were 138 without loss. Slumped to 220 all out. A remarkable turnaround from the UAE, who now just needs six runs for victory. Mark what will continue. Basil Hamid on strike. And he drives through point. Michael Jones gives chase. He's in hot pursuit. And he does well to keep it in. UAE pick up two. They're just one hit away from victory, the UAE. It'll be a performance that delights coach Dougie Brown and captain Ahmed Raza. Went in with just one frontline seamer today. The spinners did admirable work for them. You see, <laughs> Peter Della Pena was mentioning Mark Watt's ability as a footballer. You see it on full display there. Some keepy uppies. Really has been an impressive performance from the UAE today. Lost two games out of two to the U USA. The game with Scotland at Sharjah was washed out. It was the first point in ICC Cricket World Cup League Two cricket. And they're following up now with what will be an impressive victory. Three runs required. Mohamed Usman, the man on strike. 35 not out from 42 balls. Mark Watt to bowl. Callum McLeod coming in at slip. Scotland still have intent. And again, Usman going for that very fine sweep. So wide down the leg side. Takes the UAE to within two runs of victory. It's pulled straight. And that'll be one of those runs. So, scores are level, one to win for the UAE. And Basil Hamid, who's been superb throughout, has the chance to hit the winning runs in just his third ODI for the UAE. Mark Watt to bowl, round the wicket. And Hamid plays that shot again, over extra cover for four. And the UAE wrap up a convincing seven wicket victory over Scotland to close out this tri-series here at ICC Academy in Dubai. So you see that shot again from Hamid, using his feet, going over, extra cover, inside out. He's played it so well, that shot, throughout the day. He ends on 63, not out, Mohamed Usman, the other man unbeaten on 36. And that 86-run partnership, seeing the UAE over the line with seven wickets in hand, stunning victory for the hosts. A great way for them to end the tournament. Like Scotland, finish up with one victory and one no result. Three points taken from this third tri series of ICC Cricket World Cup League Two. You see the match summary there. Scotland were going great guns earlier on. Carl Kurtzer and Matthew Cross putting 100, 138 for the first wicket. But they then went from 138 to 220 all out. Roa Mustafa, excellent at the death. So was Jude Tadiki, both picking up three wickets. And Kartik Mayappan 
accounting for two massive Scottish batsmen in the same over, removing Carl Kurtzer and Richie Barrington for the UAE, led by Cherik Suri's fine 67, and then Basil Hamid, 63, not out, as well as Mohamed Usman, 36 unbeaten. Superb performance from them, making that run chase look rather routine in the end. A fine, fine victory for the UAE. What it means for ICC Cricket World Cup League Two. So UAE, USA are top with eight games played and six wins and two losses, 12 points. Behind them in second place is Scotland on nine points from their eight games. Namibia and Oman both on six points. The UAE now on three. Papua New Guinea bottom, eight losses from eight. And then Nepal yet to feature in ICC Cricket World Cup League Two. Thanks to all the people that have joined us on commentary. Peter Delapena from ESPN Crick Info, Paul Radley from The National, Smith Patel from Crick Buzz, Maza Khan from Sharjah Cricket as well joined us for a lovely conversation about cricket in that emirate. And thank you everyone who's joined us throughout these matches. Now we end here at ICC Academy, the UAE winning the final game of this tri-series by seven wickets.